get nasty on a Thursday. It's the Fast Lane on 101 ESPN. And, in fact, let's get nasty on an opening day, yes. baby. Cardinals in L.A. to take on the uh, hated Dodgers. I don't like them. The, like, um, I, don't, I don't like their uniforms. I don't like their stadium. The, uh, I don't you know, like their you know, hot what dogs. Them, what, what, Miles Michael called it what? Checkbook baseball? Checkbook baseball. So the Dodgers like play that. checkbook baseball. Yeah. Well, and they're going down. And Miles and they're allowed to. I don't know if that's really problematic. Well, I don't know. You Carry should it. take that up with. Just, just ride with me. Okay. okay. All right. Come on. Sorry. Whose side are you on? No, really? I'm just saying. Right? I, I, listen, if it's allowed, you know, what, 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 what's the problem? My only problem would be was why aren't we doing it? You know, people oh, well. get mad at the Vegas Golden Knights. Oh, they're cheating. Why aren't we? Isn't it legal? What the hell? How the Golden Knights get it? I'm just know. saying. They're, they're people complain about a lot of things that other teams do that seem to be okay. Why don't we? Why don't we? Miles Michael has said it. Well, I'm just saying. I don't, he also I don't said like something about us yesterday when I, I'm still kind of hot about that. I mean, we kind of just we took what he said and <laughs> pointed it at us. But nonetheless... <laughs> All right, no. I don't like the Dodgers. The hell with those guys. I don't man. care how much they spend. I'm with you. Yeah, bury them. You got to. It still starts play. today. Yes. Yeah. Let's go. And it starts with a lineup. The lineup game is already played. Yeah. <laughs> well, wait. Kind of. Wait, you played. all. I thought we just started the show. Yeah. I, I know I was running a little bit late uh, getting in here. <laughs> I was taking care of a few things. Did you all play the game already? Oh, no. No, no we didn't. Now, the game originates with this show. Yeah. Oh. But we didn't play it today. Mm-mm. Who? On opening day. Yeah. The audacity. Carrie's first opportunity hey. to play the lineup Oh, well, I got to figure out who the hell did this day. Uh, well, it's not too hard. It, it, was, it, wasn't, it was the opening drive? No. Oh, mm-hmm. no. Randy wouldn't do that. No. It, it, T-Mac did it? No. No. They don't have time to do the lineup game. They have all that NBA action to talk oh, about. Yeah. 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 Okay. Tough so, one for the Sixers last night. Yeah, yeah. Was. That was, that was <laughs> bad. Trey was a little, he's yeah. a little hot. Yep. Uh, there's only one other, one yeah. other option. Oh, yeah, there. say it. BK and Ferrario? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Those plagiarizing what? sons of guns. Yeah. What did they do? They just steal everything. Oh, my God. Literally steal it. Well, I, I like those guys. Do you? I do. Hmm. Still? Yeah. I, well, I got to rethink this now. Yeah. Well, well, maybe you won't like it after you hear this. But let me hear it. Marsh. Are we doing it? Oh, yeah. Oh, we're doing it. Mm. So after the show, Andrew Marsh, who works his tail off. I mean, like no Most other. days. Last night he did. <laughs> after the show... How long were you here, Marsh? I was here until 8.30. 8.30? What that time did we get off? 6. Um, 5.58 last night. 5.58 yeah. last yeah. night. That's now, right. typically, Marsh is out about 6.05. Yeah. Okay? Oh, yeah, he drops that ninja bump. <laughs> He's gone. <laughs> it's like teleportation. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> we're done by 5.58. Marsh, about 6.05. <laughs> Maybe 606 if he has to take a dump. But <laughs> no, not a minute. Like, that's that's nice of you. Not last <laughs> night. Not last night. Nope. Marsh was here till 8:30. You say, working on some things, because <laughs> Marsh is geeked out of his mind mm. for opening day. Yeah. And he knows what we do in the fast lane is the lineup game. And people that have come to love the lineup game, Jamie, Carrie. They know that Andrew Marsh has added a little spice to the lineup. Mm. Continuously evolves for us. Yes. That's what good shows do. They just continuously evolve with their own, like, material, get better upon their own thing. Uh, Exactly. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Like like an artist. Yeah. Uh Striving for more. A good comedian working on their own material. Even Mm -hmm. even Not borrowing jokes. Yeah. Well, yeah, a lot of guys do that, but we uh, we know. It's frowned upon. We see through that. Yeah. Even a band, a cover band, they'll they'll add their own spin on Mm. that. You're right, Anthony. Yeah. Yeah. So Marsh here till 8.30 last night, good two, two and a half hours, normally uh, longer than he normally is. And he's working on some new drops for the lineup game. Because as you know, when we say a name like Roland Arenado, mm. Marsh has a sounder for that. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And it was robbed. Oh, it was it. robbed by BK and Ferrario and the T-Bone. They T-boned us. Well, the, by the, stealing Marsh's work. Not just stealing it. 
like going into Marshy's file. Yeah. Well, that's actually stealing. Like right? they violated Broke into his home, basically. <laughs> they violated your <laughs> pick the lock. Hey? Pick the lock. Found the found Locked the access right code to his computer. This is my house now. Found the password. <laughs> yep. Marshy, typed it in. They completely violated your hard drive. Uh, they did. <laughs> they did. They didn't even ask. They hey. just plowed right into that mm, thing. Stuck it right I'm in there. Broken and took it. Oh man. <sighs> Huh. Marsh, please. This is your work that was stolen. Can you can you sound off on this? Because as uh, guys, rule number one in the fast lane: nobody's safe. Nobody's, nobody's safe. safe. So uh, please. So there were a few, a few that were spoiled today, unfortunately <laughs> for our listeners. Perhaps some of them uh, didn't listen to it. So we'll play those later. But uh, most of them were from the previous season, but only a few were spoiled. So we still have a few a left. few too many. A few too many, though. Yeah. Spoiled. There, I, my, using any of the I will say my favorite one was spoiled oh, today. Oh, oh, damn. Damn. I didn't know that. Oh. Son of a gun. There goes chair. I mean, come on. Chaos. Yep. Oh, no. I will say, though, did get a chuckle out of Brandon Kylie. So, you know. I'm trying to I'm trying to teeter between. Am I could have chuckled between two and six when we did the lineup. That's true. <laughs> you make a valid point. I didn't know there was a, a, a moment in a day where you, you can and can't chuckle. <laughs> I you guess still the chuckle thing, two to six. The Jamie. thing that gets me is it's not that they took the new sounders. They take any sounders. Mm. Did T Bone at any point do any of the work to no. get those sounders? No, not T. That's just. That goes against everything. It's disturbing. Like, you know, mm -hmm. do the work. And put the time in. Yeah. Show you care. And I heard a Go Cubs like Go. Go I heard a Go Cubs Go song on this radio station I did today. Uh, yeah. I did hear that as yep, well. That was unbelievable. That was nice. BK Ferrari on the T Bone again and the T Bone Three. So well, I, I, I do want to I do want to mention this. This is the second time I've seen this. They said during the lineup game segment, BK and Ferrario actually started that game. Not this show. No. Oh, go right to you know where. That, I mean, this is the you second text me? that I've seen. The good seen. thing is, are Harry, you kidding me? There's hey, checks and balances with our listeners. The I, listeners know. Just tell me what the text that is. That game was invented during COVID it because was. we had nothing else going on <laughs> and we thought we need a segment. I remember when that was born. I yes. wasn't even a part of this show yet. No, you weren't. It was uh -huh. me, Ranji, and BT. And meat. And the meat. Yeah. And I remember I used to sit in my car because I'd play be, along. And I'd play along. I'd be at the grocery store because that's all we did is come to the ready, go to the grocery store, go home, get drunk. You right. know, I mean, it was COVID, right? Yeah, right, right. Ish. Yeah. I mean, people yeah. did different yeah, things. It was all over the place. Yeah. And I remember you guys you know, firing it up. Beep, 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 beep. And I was like, what the hell is this? Mm -hmm. I loved it. Then I was really happy I could be a part of it, but on this show. Right. Yeah. And then we added to it. Yeah. Like Sounders, like Marshy. All right. Without further ado, let's let's do let's do the let's do the game. Do we want the the theme I song? I want everything. All of it. All Anthony wants all of it. Right. As if it didn't happen earlier. Give it to me. There's something that's definitely lost in that. I'm, uh, so, it's it's I, kind I of anticlimactic, Yeah, really. it certainly was. But, well, I didn't, uh, I didn't hear the lineup this morning. Okay, CD. You can, plow, you can this, play by this, yourself. I don't, this will be, I don't want to play by myself. <laughs> I want to play with my friends. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You're not about it. It's always better. It's <laughs> always better that way, CD. All right, so it's leading quicker. off. Hey, you guys what? ready? Yeah, yeah, of course. All right, more than ready. So leading off, do you just want us to tell? Do you, do you want to? Do you want to guess? Brendan Donovan. Brendan Donovan. Show us Brendan Donovan. Donnie. Hey, this headband's pretty cool. <laughs> All right. Like like that is a new one. Hitting second, CD. Paul Goldsmith. Show us Goldie. Chalk. Chalk. Yeah. Get my tub of chalk. <laughs> <laughs> And that reference obviously is uh, to us calling Paul Goldschmidt chalk or RL chalk, <laughs> as I said back in the day, probably in the Roman times. Yeah. Hitting third, Nolan Gorman. Ooh. Show us Nolan right. Gorman. Get your fresh organic popcorn. Get your popcorn ready. <laughs> <laughs> I like, I that, like that. All right, clean up. Oh, no. Sorry. No Leonardo. Done right. He's a gold glove winner and perennial all-star. Oh, listen to Mr. Gold Glove over here. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, hidden fifth. I'm going to go with, oh, Willie Contreras. DH. No, no. Edgesmith. Uh, check. 
No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, now I'm, I'm kind of stuck. We're gonna. Where am I? Need? We're right field. Six. Field. Yep. Six field. Six. Uh, is that Jordan Walker? Show us Jordan Walker. Yeah. What a shame. <sighs> what I need. It's somebody that you you have loved that we have pushed back oh, on. Oh, God, have you loved this person? Mm -hmm. I love him. Yeah, oh. you want him in the really? lineup every day, oh, yeah. playing in the outfield, preferably. You picture... Show me, show me, Burley. There it is. Yeah, yeah. Alec, we have a problem. Burley to the rescue! <laughs> Another March Simpson reference. <laughs> now, Jordan Walker. What's his angle? What angle? Launch! Launching now. Oh, well done. Well done, like Marsh. That one. Marsh deserves this yes. platform. Yes. Nice job. All right, so hitting eighth. Is it uh, Mason Wynn or is it Victor Scott second? Let's go, Mason Wynn. You're wrong. Ah. <laughs> Victor Scott second. Great Scott. Too fast. Too fast. Focus. Speed. I am speed. Nice. <laughs> Lightning, McQueen. Lightning McQueen. I love it. That's so good. <laughs> all right. And, and Mason Wynn. I'm watching the Futures game, and this thing's all over Instagram. It's like, this guy threw a ball 100 across the time. That's awesome. But, like, how many throwing errors does he have? Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> That's my new favorite. That was my favorite. Dude. That, that was, was awesome. spoiled today. <laughs> oh, that no. was the one that was spoiled? Yeah. It's old, okay. Did old Chuckles McGee yep. laugh at that one? That was the chuckle. Uh, all right, so there you have it. Brendan Donovan playing left. Paul Goldschmidt hitting second, playing first. Nolan Gorman is hitting third, and he's your second baseman. Nolan Arenado, your cleanup hitter, playing third. Wilson Contreras is behind the dish, and he's hitting fifth. Alec Burleson, your DH, hitting sixth. Jordan Walker is in right field. He's hitting seventh. Victor Scott the second, making his major league debut, will be in center, hitting eighth. And Mason Wynn playing shortstop, hitting ninth. That's your lineup today against Tyler Glass now. And the Dodgers, of course, Miles Michaelis will tow the rubber for the Cardinals. I don't believe what I just saw. Home run. So we're going to do something a little different for the yes. home run derby game. Jamie. <laughs> you know why we do this, right? We, we evolve. We continue to evolve. That's right. So, uh, no, no, Jamie, you, you say that this was your, your idea, and I want to give proper credit <laughs> to your idea. <laughs> well, Anthony, I appreciate you not stealing anything from anybody in the fast lane or any other radio show. Yeah, of course, yeah. That's uh, very honorable of you. Yep. We have integrity, some would say. Yeah, yeah. depends yeah. on the situation, but still. Ish. Um, all right, so I, I don't remember when this hit me. Uh, probably a few bourbons in the other night thought to myself, how can we improve the home run game? Because I was like, oh, I was excited for the lineup game and the home run game. I was like, oh, we always pick the same guys. It's Goldie. Or it's a race to Goldie, Arenado, Contreras, mm -hmm. Gorman. Mm -hmm. And then we're done. Yep. Like, uh, then every now and then, Marsh will throw in like a Tommy Edmond out of nowhere. Marsh does a great job he does. of mixing it up. So I thought to myself, how do we reward someone like Marshy? Yeah. Who's tired of RL Chalk? <laughs> Right? Not the person. <laughs> no, 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 no. But Nobody picking, ever gets tired of that. Yeah, picking so him. I thought to myself, what about a tiered system to where we know who the home run hitters are? That would be in tier one. And they're worth one point for every home run. Then we know the other guys who can kind of run into one from time to time, that 10 to 20 home run range where you're like, okay, this is tier two. Mm -hmm. And then tier three are the guys that are, you know, hit to the gap type guys. They're not home run power hitters, but they might every now and then get one. They're worth three points. So now if you pick chalk every single game, you get one point, one point, one point. But if you want to expand your lead or catch up, you can grab a Brendan Donovan or a Mason Wynn and three points for one home run. Are we still doing first home run of the game for the Cardinals? Yes. Okay. All right. I love it. I love it. So he actually said this is like the best idea he's ever had. The best idea he's ever had ever. Uh, he, you've yeah. known him for many, many oh, years. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I've had he's had a lot of ideas, but this ideas. is the best By one. By far the best yeah. one. That you can recall. <laughs> that I can, we recall. can talk yeah. about on the air. Yeah. Definitely the best yeah. sports <laughs> idea. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. good call. See, yep. Marshy, I like yes. that. Good yeah. So yeah. very quickly here. Tier... Marshy's a good disciple. <laughs> <laughs> tier one will be Nolan Arnato, Paul Goldschmidt, Nolan Gorman, and Wilson Contreras. So if you pick any of those guys, they're worth one point if they hit the first home run. Tier two, 
Alec Burleson, Jordan Walker, Lars Newbar, and Dylan Carlson. And obviously some of these guys are hurt. Yeah. So DC hurt. Tier three would be Mason Wynn, Victor Scott, Brendan Donovan, Edmund when healthy, Matt Carpenter, and Brandon Crawford. So you pick any of those guys, they hit the first home run for the Cardinals. Not the first home run in the game, but for the Cardinals. That's worth three points. Yeah. All right. Now, since... Uh, do we want to keep it like that? The hamster just jumped in its yeah. wheel a little bit. Or do we want to just say, like... Any, at any home run. At any point. So that, like... I think it might be better if it's any home run. You might get the first yeah. home run with Paul Goldschmidt, but I might get the third or second home run of the game. But mine's hey. worth three points. Mm. Now, if you hit multiple home runs... Like oh. if, if Mason oh. Wynn has a two home oh. run day, oh. hey, bro. let it ride. That's six points. Let it ride. Yeah, if Mason, <laughs> Ooh. Where, where are we? why wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let it ride. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know. I've thrown a lot of ideas now into this. I don't think it pot. has to be the first. I think any home any run. Any home run. Anytime your guy hits a home run, you're In collecting that, right. one of these points. I, I like, like that. I like oh, it a lot. Oh, boy. All right. Now, since Marsh was taken advantage of today, <laughs> I say I say Marsh goes first. Yes, for sure. All right. All right. I'm going to go with Carrie's favorite baseball player, two points, Alec Burleson. Alec Burleson is off the board. Kerry, you're a first timer to the home run derby game, so I think you should go second. I think I'm going to go with the uh, much maligned from last season, Wilson Contreras. All right. Jamie, it was your idea, so I yeah. say you go third. Uh, to, to just dip my toes in the pool gently here, we're going uh, Nolan Gorman. All right. I'm going with some chalk. Uh, I'll, I'll go with the kid. I'll go Jordan Walker. So I got Walker for two. Jamie's got uh, Gorman. Gorman for, for two. No, He's going to hit two of them. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> one point apiece. Contreras, one point for uh, each home run. Yeah. And then Marsh, Alec Burleson with two. So Marsh and I got the two. Is Burley in the two tier? Tier two? He's in tier two. Yeah, yeah. he is. Yep. Yeah. That's a good pick. It's a cagey pick. That's a, that's a really good pick. Don't, yeah. don't oh, he doesn't hit a lot of home runs. runs. Oh, he's going to hit a lot this year because right. he's in the lineup every day. There you have it. All right, opening day. What are the expectations for the 2024 Cardinals? What are proper expectations? We'll get into that next on 101 ESPN. All right, are you thinking about selling your home? Well, that can be pretty stressful sometimes. The market right now is you know, all over the place. But if you're a seller, the market can be in your favor. And the best way to find out how to capitalize on that is to talk to Gloria Lou with your home sold guaranteed realty. And Gloria Lou has several different ways to help you. Uh, one I like personally is a guaranteed sales. That's where Gloria Lou sits down with you and comes up with the sales price and she sells your home for that exact price or she buys herself and she guarantees all of that in handwriting. And Glory Lou also to help you sell your home, she has a database with thousands of ready and willing buyers and that just adds more traffic to your listing, hopefully multiple offers and more money in your pocket. So please pick up the phone today, call Gloria Lou, tell her Jamie Rivers sent you in. That number is 314-325-6888. That's 314-325-6888. Or you can visit Gloria has the buyers.com. Conditions to apply. Gloria and the seller must agree upon the sales price and possession date.
be doing our 2024 MLB predictions ahead of uh, opening day here in Major League Baseball. Now, a couple games have already been played because of the International Series, but look, this is for all intents and purposes, this is opening day. What do you think of that, by the way, the International Series? Forgot it was on. <laughs> Forgot so, it was on. And then I woke up one day out and it, went out, it was last week out in Florida. I woke up. And ESPN, you know, I go to ESPN.com, and they had they, they had the scores like the bottom of the sixth inning at that point. Yeah, I was like, "What? Oh, yeah, that's right." <laughs> Completely forgot it was on. Yeah, we were um, <clears throat> we were on the road. I forget if we were in Ottawa or Minnesota. Maybe it was Minnesota. And I I sometimes fall asleep with the TV on. Call it falling asleep, but mm-hmm. <laughs> um, <laughs> falling asleep, passed out. Either way, <laughs> yeah, there was sleep involved. And uh, I woke up to the beginning. It was like 5 a.m. So I'm like, what the hell is this? Then all of a sudden I was wide awake watching this stupid baseball game as the Dodgers were getting thumped by the Padres, and then the Dodgers come flying back. It was like a, basically they were pitching underhand in this game. Mm-hmm. So I was slightly entertained. I thought it was kind of fun. Was that the Yamamoto game or the first game? It was the uh, Yamamoto. Yamamoto. Yeah, yeah, that was good. Yeah, Boy, nice. that looks bright. That's yeah, a lot. So much for that $300 million. Mm. Uh, we'll we'll see. see. All right, so. He pro- sucks. <laughs> <laughs> so proper. Good ex- job, Mo didn't get him. <laughs> yeah, Mo just, he's smart. He knew. 2024 <laughs> expectations for the Cardinals. You can go anywhere you want in this. You can go division. You can go, you can just go playoffs. What are your expectations? Oh, boy. Oh, oh, debut. Here we go. So we... Uh, Here we go. We have purchased red glasses. Oh, he's a, nice. I actually, I'm seeing red. Nice. Yeah, you are. <laughs> CD can pull that look yeah, off. Yeah, he can. Yeah. 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 So here's the thing. My expectation... Is to win all of them. I mean, seriously, as many as you can. 140 wins. Why, why not? <laughs> why not? We're going to start this year. You just talked about how terrible Yamamoto is, right? Yeah, he was he's unable yeah. to perform, Cut clearly. Him. Shohei Otani, I don't even know if he's going to be playing here shortly, so who knows? Uh, he's definitely ooh, not going to be pitching. Ooh, I wouldn't either. He did. I'm allegedly. Maybe. maybe. Possibly. But here's the thing. Cardinals, did, I, did you hear that lineup? Did you hear that line? That was a stellar oh, yeah. lineup. We got guys that are going to be hitting the balls. We got two leadoff hitters at the bottom of the lineup. When they get on base, ho, 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 havoc. Okay? So you should be excited about the St. Louis Cardinals team. I'm excited. You excited? You excited? Marcia, you excited? I'm excited. Okay? All right. All right. I'm excited. All right. I'm excited. All yeah. right. All right. I'm excited. <laughs> Wow. Whoa. Oh, okay. okay. Sorry. Power 85, 85, 85 wins. Yeah. <laughs> 85 wins after he takes off the He's Cardinals back. colored glasses. The, color, the red colored glasses. 85 wins. Jamie? Uh, I, look, at, I expect this team to win somewhere between 85 and 89 games and win the Central. I don't have much more than that. <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm right there with you. Uh, they're going to yeah. be mediocre. I think a lot of the league is going to be mediocre. <laughs> you're top heavy. You're so top heavy with teams like the Braves and the Dodgers, and I mean, really, the American League's kind of wide open this year for the most part up top. But everybody else, I think everybody else is going to be in that 80 to 9 to 89 win range. I've got the Cardinals winning 85, 86 games and winning the winning the Central as well. But it's going to it's going to be them and the Cubs. It's going to be a foot race until the end. I don't think it's decided until the last the last week. I'm going to say 88 wins. I think this team gets out to a slow start. I think through the middle months, right around flag day, they start getting their stuff together. And I think at the deadline is when Mo is really going to have to have a, oh, crap moment and really get pieces to help this team on the back half of the Cardinals season. And I so think like they end up with 36 year olds. Yeah, preferably. Maybe, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I do think, though, like after what happened last season, that once you get to the deadline, if you're still somewhat of a middling team, that moves need to be made. And I think Mo does his best work at the deadline. And so I think they will get some pieces at the deadline and have a better back half of the season and still win 88 games. And they'll win the division. (laughs) They have to win the division. Well, the rest of the division doesn't care. No, one one team does. The Cubs. Do mm. they? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, they paid their manager more than their team. <laughs> there's only there's always two teams that care. And you the said NL the Central. manager doesn't even matter. <laughs> I said the manager doesn't matter in relation to other coaches in yeah. in other sports. Is he the most? He's the <laughs> highest paid guy on the team now. Well, he's helped. damn good. Look how many <laughs> regular season that wins that Craig Council had. Mm. He's, I know he's not the top paid guy, but 
He's, paid a lot he's a lot. probably pretty. Yeah, he's pretty high. Maybe third or fourth. But no, there's always two teams in the division. The rest of the division doesn't really care. Like every everything's like the Reds. The Reds are going to be good. The Reds are going to be plucky. Like the Reds. The Reds might be good in the first half of the season, but they're going to fade at some point. And yeah, the Pirates got a really good young talent that is years away, and they'll trade those guys before their you know their time is up. And then you got the Brewers. The Brewers traded traded their best pitcher in Corbin Burns to Baltimore. They're still tra- they're they're still paying for the Christian Yelich contract years later, getting rid of some guys. So, yeah, you got two teams. You got the Cardinals. You got the Cubs. And whoever wins the division goes to the postseason. Obviously, whoever loses the division, you're, I don't think they're going to be in the wild card mix. I think there's too too many good teams in the National League this year, at least for the wild card mix. All right, it's Fastlane on 101 ESPN. We have our 2024 MLB predictions for the National League. So we'll go over our National League division winners, postseason, who's going to win the pennant in the National League. That's next on 101 ESPN. Gentlemen, grand slams, no hitters, and double plays are back, baby. And there's no better place to be in on all of that action than with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Because right now, new customers can start the MLB season with $200 in bonus bets, Kerry. That's if their first bet of $5 wins. Yeah, Jeremy, that's 200 bucks you can use on money lines totals, strikeouts, homers, you name it, or combine your bets in the same game parlay for a chance at an even bigger payout, all on an app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Anthony, opening day for the Cardinals today. What are you looking at? Opening day around Major League Baseball. How about that? I, I mean, if you look at some of these these lines, how about the over in the Blue Jays-Rays game at 7.5? Or when you're looking at uh, the, the Cardinals and Dodgers, why don't we go under? I think Miles My, Michaelis pitches well. I think Tyler Glass now pitches well. Winds up being a bit of a pitcher's duel. You can also fade us if you want. Just go to FanDuel.com slash fast. Again, FanDuel.com slash fast to join today. And you can make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. Must be 21 or older and present in Illinois. First online real money wager only. $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued is non withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem call 1-800-GAMBLER. Gentlemen, are you currently using ED meds? Well, it doesn't matter. I know you just want to hit that home run, right? Well, the best way to do that is by visiting the medicine shop in St. Charles, who are your destination for cheap ED meds. Uh, Never mind that little blue pill and the gummy thing and all that stuff. No. The medicine shop in St. Charles has a generic called Sildenafil. It's less than $2 a pill. Prescriptions required, of course. Uh, They also have great services available to all of their clients. And the one I take full advantage of that I love is that they they have free, discreet shipping and delivery to your home or your workplace. So tonight, for example, for me, I'm here at the radio station, got to drive down to Enterprise Center, got to get home late at night, rinse, repeat tomorrow, all this. I don't always have time to get to the pharmacy. The medicine shop comes to me and delivers any medicines that I need on a regular basis. They take great care of me, and I absolutely love that program. They also have a great facility located in St. Charles. Walk in, ask them any questions. They've got the answers for you. They treat you like their their family. I call them my pharmacy family, for that matter. So, again, please stop by that facility, check it out, or visit them online at stcharles.pharmacy. That's stcharles.pharmacy.
101 ESPN Sports Center. I'm Andrew Marsh. It's time for a Sports Center update, driven by Johnny Londoff Chevrolet and Johnny Londoff Autoplex. Happy opening day, everybody. The Cardinals take on the Los Angeles Dodgers today. A 3 10 first pitch as Miles Michaelis takes the bump going up against Tyler Glass. Now, we'll talk about the Cardinals leading up until uh, first pitch, and we'll continue talking about them throughout the remainder of the day as well. We also have Blues and Flames tonight, right here on 101 ESPN. Pre-game starts at 6 o'clock. Puck drop is at at seven, a huge, a huge game for the Blues tonight. They need to pick up a win as they take on the Calgary Flames. I'm Andrew Marsh, and the Sports Center update is driven by Johnny Londoff. Find your roads and shop 24-7 at Londoff.com and LondoffAutoplex.com. Are you kidding me? for Major League Baseball. These uh, these usually turn out right. At least like one division. Like the Chicago White Sox <laughs> winning the <laughs> AL pennant? Yeah, okay. Marsh. It's all right. I picked the Yankees, I think. You had the Blue Jays and the Cardinals, I think, right? I did have the Blue Jays and the Cardinals. Because we were World sitting Series. there on opening day <laughs> last year. Battle of the Birds, baby. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was perfect uh, for you. Sure Cardinals, was. Blue Jays, makes sense. All right. Forget about, forget about last year, boys. It's about this year. Who do you guys have winning the <laughs> National League Central? I mean, you're saying Louis Cardinals. Uh, that, do you mean it? No, I do mean it. I don't have the glasses. Carry. I, I do. No, I'm gonna keep the glasses. I, I don't. I, I do mean it. Okay. I think as long as the pitching <laughs> stays healthy, as long as they perform at the level in which they are expected to perform, the pitching. I, I'm I'm not as concerned with the defense and the, and the hitting as I am. I think most people are with the pitching. The pitching can stay healthy. We know they're a little bit older. They gave up a lot of hits last year. Hopefully some of those things can be corrected. You got better defense behind them. And so I'm going to go with the St. Louis Cardinals. Yeah, I am too. I'm right towards the Cardinals. Uh, Look, a couple things. One, I can be as upset or irritated with what they did in the offseason and whatnot. I'm still going to cheer for them. I love the Cardinals. I really do. And I guess I get angry sometimes because I want them to be successful. I want them to be at the top of the food chain again in Major League Baseball. This time here, they'll have a chance to be at the top of the food chain in the Central. What that means ultimately, I have no idea. But I expect them, I have to expect them to win that division based on how bad that division is. You know, uh, you go throughout a regular season and um, sometimes, every once in a while, you're going to tear, tear an Achilles and you're going to have a bad year, mm. okay? Otherwise, you're a really good regular season mm. team or player. The St. Louis Cardinals are the Kirk Cousins of Major League Baseball. <laughs> ah, this, okay. is a, this is a, 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 a quarterback that's going to be in every regular season game mm-hmm. unless he tears his Achilles. Thank like you. he did last year. Cardinals, same deal. They tore yeah. their Achilles last year, okay? There was a, Wound up being a bad year. It's another quarterback who tore Both his Achilles. It's like a Cardinals term both. Yeah, they did. Yeah, both of them. Yeah, good call. Just they couldn't even over. limp off the field. No. No. Just crawl, army crawl. The army crawled. <laughs> Dragging their legs. Yeah. The Cardinals ran out onto the field with an American flag, and then the season was over. Yes. Oh, yes, man. exactly. Oh, wow. Ah. Good call. Two yeah, pitches in. Right. No, he's right. He's right. Two pitches in. <laughs> Two pitches in. Uh, but they are the Kirk Cousins of Major League Baseball. They will be in it in the regular season. We'll get to the postseason in a second. Marsh, who do you got in the NL Central? Yeah, I'm going with the Cardinals as well. I... I know we've been snarky the entire offseason, but today is a new day, clean slate, and from now on, that is how we will evaluate this team. Uh, But I'm excited for for this season. We'll see what my level of excitement will be throughout the remainder of the year. But for now, I'm excited. I have the Cardinals winning. Hopefully, they they uh, they don't let me down. We will not play that Cubs crap. No. On, oh, the, no. on this show. No. Okay. This Maybe that in other shows, but not this here. St. Louis. Not up in here. All right, I just so threw up yeah. listening to that. Yeah, what is that? We all have the Cardinals win the, winning the NL Central. The NL East. Marsh. <laughs> it's the Braves. It's the Braves for me. I don't I don't really have anything to say about it other than it's the Braves. Best roster in baseball. I got the Braves, too. Braves. Hmm. I don't know. 
everything. He's thinking Marlins. Yeah, I'm thinking a couple different <laughs> things here. Phillies. Everything tells me to say the Braves. <laughs> and I look at the Phillies, and I'm like, uh, you don't have to squint that hard. And then you look at the Marlins, they got the great pitching. Like, I don't know. It's a tough one for me, Anthony. Well, get off the fence. Let's go. It's time to make predictions. How about you <laughs> shut your face? How about you? I mean, this man has <laughs> got to be hurting you riding that fence. Come on. Depends. Is it picket? <laughs> yes. Okay, then I'm going to save the Braves. There we go. Yep. Braves, sorry. <laughs> Get the hell off of that. Nas- uh. National League West. Do we all have the Dodgers? <laughs> yes. yes. All right. Uh, first wild card. I think I was saying two wild cards the other day like an idiot. There's three mm. wild cards. First wild card for you, Marsh. I'm going to go with the San Francisco Giants. There I like are. what they did in the offseason, and I know that that team is near and dear to your heart, Anthony, so I'm going to go with the San Francisco Giants is my first wild card team. All right, Kerry. Philadelphia Phillies. I'm with, wild card. I'm with you there, too. Yeah. They got the pitching and a little yeah. lineup Phillies. Yeah, we got a text message from our guy, Izzy. Izzy, 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 Izzy. Um, he said, y'all sound like you're dying. The COVID show, he says. <laughs> <laughs> what? You should have heard us last yeah. week. Oh, <laughs> earlier this Izzy, week. We have voices of <laughs> angels. Yeah, yeah today, to to, <laughs> today is the best right. day yet. Yeah. yeah. Izzy, if you were listening last week, man, it yeah. was rough. Yeah. Uh, Go okay. back, Izzy, download the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> all that brought to you by Dobbs Tire and Auto. And you can hear all about it. That's right. All we right, love so it, Izzy. Carrie and I got the Phillies. Marsh has the Giants first wild card for you in the National League, Jamie. Oh, Phillies. Okay. Second wild card. Marsh. Phillies. Uh, oh. I'm probably eh, oh, Diamondbacks. Ooh. AZ Diamondbacks. AZ. Your National League pennant winners. Yeah, you're right about those guys, huh? They just added a pretty good pitcher, didn't uh, they? That guy yes, couldn't cut it here. He was, he was struggling. <laughs> him. He was struggling. We had to get him out of here. He didn't want to be here, Mark. He's causing too many issues. Couldn't cut it in New York. Didn't want to be here. Guy's problem. Yep. <laughs> Quite honestly. Um, my second wild card, the Padres. Okay, I'm going to go. Uh, this is where I go Giants. I, I, I like their pitching. I like, I like uh, Logan Webb. I like Blake Snell. Uh, the young kid, Kyle Harrison. So I think they're, they're, good. they're primed to bounce back here. Third wild card, Marsh. I have the Diamondbacks. That's where I have the mm-hmm. Diamondbacks as well. I got the Padres. Padres, Jamie. Marlins. What? Well, Marlins. Okay, Skip Schumacher. There you go. Okay, real quick, we'll run through the uh, the postseason stuff. Wild card. I don't know if you guys went this deep, but I, I got the Phillies over the Giants. I've got the Diamondbacks over the Cardinals because, as I mentioned before, the Cardinals are the Kirk Cousins of Major League Baseball. Mm. Great regular season. Going to be bouncing in the first round. <laughs> Braves over the Diamondbacks in the divisional round. Phillies over the Dodgers in the divisional round. And then Atlanta over the Phillies in the pennant. So I got mm. Atlanta winning the pennant. I got the Dodgers winning the pennant. Dodgers winning I the pennant. I don't know how they don't. They bought everybody. They paid for everything. That's uh-huh. exactly why mm. they won't win it. I nah. got the Braves, too. Braves. I also have the Braves. Braves. That carries. And, and Dodgers. Dodgers. All right. Mm. Who do you guys have in the, the, the pennant? I know you guys. I, I know you guys have the like Dodgers and Braves. I'd say the Dodgers mm-hmm. versus the Braves. Dodgers, yeah. Braves. Yeah, that's probably going to be yeah, Braves, I'd Dodgers. Say. Yeah. All right. So I'm the only one that do, I, I don't have the Dodgers making it out of the first round. No, oh, that's madness. You got to pay for your sins. I don't sins. mind it. You got to pay for your sins. <laughs> I mean, that's I like your pay. attitude. But Thank you. Not necessarily maybe the uh, thought process, but that's fine. Right. It's going to be an NL East pennant again. Mm-hmm. Braves and. Right. Braves and Phillies. We'll do our American League predictions coming up in a little bit, but we got what's trending coming up next. Save money with the Swiss Air's heating and cooling's best deal of the year. SwissAirSTL.com. Hands down the best lawn company and the only company that uh, we trust at our house when it comes to servicing our lawn is Green Envy. Green Envy will make your lawn the envy of the neighborhood because they only use products that are formulated for our Missouri soil, our Missouri weather type, our Missouri turf types. When it comes to Green Envy, 
they'll come out, they'll spray, especially right now. Now is a perfect time to jump on the program because where you've got the, the rain and then some of the, the warm warm temperatures, that also means you got crabgrass, you got weeds all over the place. So if you're already mowing your lawn, but all you're mowing is weeds and crabgrass, you got to call Green Envy. They'll do a great job coming out. They'll spray. They do a great job, and one of one, the, they'll, they'll they'll cover the entire lawn. But if there's a certain area, because they're bother, they're they're battling Mother Nature as well. If there's a certain area that winds up being a problem area, they'll come out and respray again uh, the following week at no no extra charge. They want to make sure that you're set up for the summer months, and then of course when you get in the fall, they want healthy grass so that each and every year they actually have to do less because your lawn is healthier they'll tell you that up front green envy is the best they're fantastic they use a special crabgrass preventer that's a trade trade secret to keep this the the, the weed from taking over your lawn service professionals that are screened and uh, of course they're licensed all employees in fact are screened at background checks performed annually they're open 12 hours a day monday through friday and they're going to take your calls and your questions right now at 636-757-1600 Walter Sanchez, Green Envy. Time to find out what's going on in the sports world with What's Trending Now. Brought to you by Goodwill. Donate a car and get tickets to the St. Louis Cardinals.
Welcome back to the Fast Lane here on 101 ESPN with Anthony Stalter, Jamie Rivers, and Kerry Davis. I'm Andrew Marsh, and it's time for What's Trending. Guys, happy Super Bowl 51 day. Yes. Uh, March 28th. Uh, 328. Mm. It's not when the game was played. The NFL isn't even on did in March. No, that was no. a score. It was a, there was a score at one point. How do you lose that game? No pass rush? I don't think that's it. I think that's exactly it. Uh, no Tom Brady. Let's be honest. <laughs> they had. You can't deny it. They had Matty Ice. Who? Matt. Who? Ice. Matty he Ice. He played great. He was terrible. He was, he was not terrible. A good <laughs> quarterback would close that, that out. Mm-hmm. Did he win the MVP that year? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, did he win the MVP of the Super Bowl? He did not. That's all did I he wanted to carry. Did he get some fluke play <laughs> where the ball magically stayed up for Julian Edelman for, for no G-damn reason? That was a hell of a catch. <sighs> hell of a catch. That's a hell of a catch. Should have been picked off. Mm. Uh, Can't take a sack, the though. Ground. The biggest force in that game is that Brady played well. He didn't. He played well for a quarter and a half. That's all he needed against that crap mm. team. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's nothing, Jamie. What what can I say? There's nothing I can say on this. All right, then stop talking. There's nothing I can say. So just let it go. Go for it. Hey Elsa, let it go. I didn't bring it up. I didn't either. Marshy did. Yeah, I'm just. We're just celebrating. <laughs> are we celebrating? Who's celebrating. Nobody Fal- here's celebrating. Everybody. Falcons fans are. Why would Falcons fans? I'm sorry. Not by Falcons. finding I the tallest <laughs> building. I apologize. Patriots fans are. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. They, they, they're the one thing that's ever been good to the Patriots. It's, uh, did you notice that's the only thing they remember? I mean, it's the um, whole dynasty they've got. They've got so many Super Bowls. Oh, that's the one they want remember, to go back Anthony. to. That's just one of. Mm. Yeah, one of. That's the, only one they, that's the only one they talk about. It's the greatest comeback in Super Bowl history. So, I mean, it's kind of cool. It's just kind saying. of important. For now, it's the greatest comeback in Super Bowl. <laughs> I like to view the I mean, Chiefs. Records are there to be broken. I like to view the Chiefs, too. Comebacks against the Niners is the greatest comebacks. Well, that wasn't in the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. It was. Nah, Literally last weren't. year. They weren't down by well, they were down. that many points. Greatest. Uh, we didn't talk about how many points it needed to come back. Hey, listen, oh, the greatest comeback Marshy, in Super Bowl next. history, <laughs> Chiefs a year Just ago. Next. Second was probably the Chiefs the first time they played the Niners. <laughs> I should have never said anything. Just let it, I should have never know how said he gets. anything. He gets pouty and whiny. Just I don't get pouty. I'm just saying. You're almost the crying. greatest Super you Bowl notice, victory. Carrie, do you notice Anthony when he gets angry? He's one of those guys that when he gets angry, he gets so angry that he starts to cry a he little bit. Shaking. Yeah, he doesn't know why he's crying, but he's angry and he's crying. This you is why watch just, out for those people. Honestly, I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Move on, okay, Marsha. <laughs> it's like when, like when a little kid like falls and they just stand there, and then the parent is like, "Are you okay?" And then, and they, then they start yeah. crying. Mm. That's you why you're right. Eh. It's why you gotta tell them you're okay. Yeah. You're like, good. Get up. Walk. Move yeah. around. No problem. I, I, see, my I picture young, my young. I did last night to my son. <laughs> my, well, you're fine. Boom. My infant, Anthony. <laughs> I picture, the, this is how I picture my young Anthony Stalter mm-hmm. running around the house in Michigan. Is, um, <laughs> that I thought it was San Jose. He trips. Where's he from? Playing soccer with his friends. He trips and he... I wouldn't be playing soccer. Well, <laughs> the story's already off to a rough start. No, but this is why. This is this is why you hate soccer. Now. Oh! Okay. oh yeah. Is your friends who are a little bit older than you and realize that you're an only child. Mm-hmm. And they're all brothers and related and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. They're playing a little aggressive with Anthony. Mm-hmm. And Anthony has the ball. And they kick the ball, but they kick his feet out too somewhat on purpose anthony ends up with road rash on his hands which we all know that really that stinks Mm -hmm. and anthony see this is where it all began is anthony didn't ever forget that (laughs) he didn't cry in that moment he was bleeding everywhere and they were laughing and boy did they laugh (laughs) anthony he didn't cry what kind of rash is bleeding that much (laughs) A no, road rash. When you, you slide on the ground, the, scrape you know, your concrete, okay. got bleed. It. But right. you wouldn't even tend to it because you didn't want to give them the satisfaction. And that's where it all began, Carrie. The right rage. There. The rage <laughs> and like the holding on to things. And, you know, just things like that's where it all started. And and Michael and Jeffrey and Colin, you know who you are. <laughs> you did this to Anthony and you did this to us. Yeah. That's how I picture my young. Who have you been talking to in my family? <laughs> a lot of detail. Don't worry about it. Okay. okay. All right. Don't worry about it. All Just right. because they call me son as well. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, today is opening day. came up with those names on the spot. <laughs> you know who you are. Colin. 
Today is opening day. However, we do have a blues game tonight. Jeffrey, too, not <laughs> Jeff. You win Jeffrey. <laughs> All right, guys. G too. Sorry, go ahead, Mark. <laughs> Blues yeah. play tonight. Uh, they are six points back of the Vegas Golden Knights with 10 games left to go. Thoughts on the Blues heading into tonight's game? Jamie, what do you what, what do the Blues need to do to sort of get over that loss the other night against the, the Golden Knights? Well, you got to come out ready to go right mm-hmm. away. You got to park it. You don't have time. You've got 10 games left in the season. You don't have time to sit there and woe is me and things like that and no you got to get after it right away if i'm drew banister and i'm this this blues team i can't wait for puck drop Mm -hmm. i can't wait to get going again and in that locker room you know talking to the guys they believe they believe they still have a chance which i mean mathematically they do and i said this on the the morning drive not too long ago or the opening drive the morning show was i said that that's all i care about is that this team still believes. If we have a team that just gives up, it's like, oh, six points behind now. Uh, yeah, you know, we'll play it out. Yeah. That tells me you don't have the right culture and the leadership going on, whether it's the coaching staff, the players, you name it. The fact that this team still stands there and says, no, we're, we're still making a run at this. That's what I care about. That's how you start building in the right direction. So whether they make the playoffs or not, as long as they fight to the very end, acting like they still have a chance to win or that they still want to win, that can and will carry over to next year. That will be part of the development of this team culture moving forward. Jamie's got his keys to victory, and we'll do the first goal of the game right before the gauntlet at 345. But uh, coming up next, we got our 2024 MLB predictions continued. we got the American League next on 101 ESPN. When it comes to the Missouri Athletic Club, I love being a club member for oh yeah, their gym, their, their amenities. I love the fact that uh, I can work there, or get something to eat there. But when it comes to the Missouri Athletic Club, it's much more than, than that. It's, it's a full club. And when you're talking about family activities, well, they get, we got Easter coming up. They got the uh, egg hiding contest that's, that's coming up at the Missouri Athletic Club this, this Saturday. So they, they've got something for everybody. They've got an Easter brunch as well. So it's, it's not just for you as an individual. Your entire family can enjoy the club as well. I know mine does. It's the Missouri Athletic Club. It's Miami C. If you are looking to accessorize your vehicle, please head over to Pure Performance. They are your one-stop shop for all aftermarket modifications, and there's two types of modifications that are made. Maybe you have a brand new vehicle and you want to add to that right away. Uh, Pure Performance has everything for that vehicle, and we already know the vehicle looks sharp and you love it. 
Now, some people, like me, have a, a truck that's a couple years old looking to change it up, spice it up a little bit. Pure Performance is the best place to do that. Walk into their 25,000 square foot facility. Uh, it's the largest showroom in the area. And when you do that, ask for Shelby. Tell Shelby that Jamie Rivers sent you in. She's going to ask what kind of vehicle you've got. And it could be a Jeep, it could be a Bronco, it could be a pickup truck, SUV, a car, even a minivan. They have accessories for anything that you're looking to accomplish. They also have a full-service garage in there, too. So once they're done accessorizing your car, uh, if you need an oil change or tune-up or wiper blades or anything like that, Pure Performance can take care of everything for you. And when you pick up your vehicle, you are absolutely going to love it. I can tell you that. Every time I drive by there, I see something that is incredible coming out of the back, and the technicians are so good at what they do. So please stop by, check things out. You'll love it. If not, get by there online. Visit them at pureperformance.com. That's pure, P-U-R, performance.com. Baseball 302. Your time check is brought to you by Clarkson Jewelers, an officially licensed Rolex jeweler with Andrew Marsh, Kerry Davis, Jamie Rivers, and Anthony Stalter. Time for our American League predictions. Uh, so just real quickly, guys, uh, Marsh, go ahead and start us off. National League, just go ahead in case anybody missed them. Just rattle you, off all of yeah, them. Yeah, just, okay. just your division and, and pennant winner. Gotcha. So uh, the Central, I have the Cards. The East, I have the Braves. Dodgers win the West. My first wild card team is the Giants. My second wild card team in the National League is the Phillies. My third wild card team is the Diamondbacks. And I have the Braves heading to the World Series representing the National League. Kerry, you had? I had the Cardinals win in the Central, Braves win in the uh, East, and I had the Dodgers win in the West. And I got the Dodgers winning it all and you had the phillies the diamondbacks the phillies diamondbacks padres padres no. your wild card yep yep those are my three wild cards are we re recapping jamie everything? you had braves dodgers yeah, cardinals <laughs> yeah and then you had the phillies the padres and the marlins yes yes okay there you go so no you didn't have to i just yeah. i didn't know where we were headed. i thought i got I'm like, it american i got it all i got it all up I'm here a, i'm a I'm on to the American League. I know, but we're a National it's League right. fan base, and people are going to be like, well, I didn't do the National League, and people like to send complaints and stuff to Mike Ryder. And I don't want to avoid that. Facebook you know? messages. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Whatever it is, right. whatever your vehicle right. is. Yeah, 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 I don't want people upset on opening day. Yeah. Uh, I got the Braves, Cardinals, Dodgers as my division winners, Phillies, Giants, Diamondbacks for the wild card, and I got the Braves over the Phillies in the NL pennant. All right, AL East, Marsh, what do you got? The AL East, I have the Baltimore Orioles. As do I. As do I. I love the addition of Corbin Burns, that young pitching staff. Grayson Rodriguez is going to be really good as well. The lineup is young, chock full of talent. I like the Orioles to win the AL East as well. What about you guys? I Gary, got the uh, reemergence of the Yankees. I'm with really? Him. Yeah. I'm Even with without him. Garrett Cole. Yeah. yeah, I'm with him. I think they've got so much pop in their lineup that, that they're going to bang. Okay. They're going to be fine. All right. You got the Yankees, Same. too? Yeah. Okay. Um, Marsh, AL Central. I'm going to go with the Twins. Twinkies. Mm -hmm. I got a lot of friends up there, and unfortunately, <laughs> they're Minnesota Vikings. My Minnesota Vikings didn't make the playoffs. I don't believe that the Wild are going to make the playoffs, but I do think the Twins will make it in this year. I mean, can we just pick a name out of hat? Pretty much, right, Kerry? I, I would I would probably do two of those teams, <laughs> at least. <laughs> Guardians and Twins, but... All right, I'm going to go with the Twins as well in a division where 
four of the other teams were under 500. I kind of like the NL Central. Wow. I, that, that Central thing has kind of got a theme to it. It certainly does. Yeah. And it's not a theme you want. No. I'll, uh, I'm kind of stuck between the Guardians and the Twins as well. I'll go with the Guardians. I got the Twins. I just like their pitching better, led by Pablo Lopez. But if you go up and down the, the, the rotation, I, I like them a little bit better. Maybe this is the year that we get a surprise team. You know, the Royals got a lot of young talent. They made some moves in the offseason. But other than that, I'll just I'll go with the Twins. All right. AL West, which is going to be interesting. You got the Astros, you got the Mariners, you got the Rangers, the A's, of course. Hmm. Uh, and the Angels. Uh, and the Angels. Uh, no, Forget no, no, about no, them. They got two managers. They're already down 5 1, by the way. Who is? The Angels. Two. The Orioles. Mike Trout got, got a solo home run. In the top of the third. Yeah. Mike Trout's got a solo home run. That's it. He did. He had a first I inning. Even... First inning, Trout hit a home run. That's all you came to see. Good. Good. That guy. Get out of there, man. Oh, man. Just go. You don't want to leave. I know. That's weird. So rot, right. Mike. That's weird. Sorry. That's weird. I got uh, the Astros. 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 I thought they were going to make it to the World Series last year. Came up a little bit short. I'm going to Astros. Yep. I'm going to go with the Rangers. And I think the reason I'm going with them is they might start off mediocre to just above average. But then they start to get guys back. They get Max Scherzer back. Uh, Jacob deGrom is going to come back at some point. I, I see them becoming a powerhouse. I got the Rangers. I got the Mariners. Mm-hmm. I love their pitching. I love uh, Gilbert and uh, I think, uh, honestly, we'll get to these maybe a little bit later, but George Kirby, I think, is a Cy Young contender. Luis Castillo. Everybody's like, oh, they, they, they don't have enough offense. They have more than enough offense. So I like the Mariners to win it. I'm going to go with the Astros. I think they get, I mean, they're just there every year. I have them winning pretty safe play yeah all right marsh your first wild card i'm gonna go with the mariners i do like the mariners this year i just don't think that they'll be good enough to win the the division but i think julio rodriguez is going to have a huge year i'm gonna go to baltimore orioles i I picked the yankees to win the division i think the baltimore orioles will be uh the number one wild card yeah i'm right there too orioles for me i took the astros so i just you guys all like Houston. We flip that division. Yep. yep. I, I got the Mariners winning the division. I got the Astros as the first wild card. Marsh, your second wild card. I'm going to go with the Rangers. Basically, what Jamie just said, I think they're going to come off to, you know, a slow start, but then they're going to make their way back into, you know, relevancy and whatnot in the later part of the year. And I, they, I have them as my wild card, too. I'm going to go Rangers as well. I think, you know, I think they'll be they're obviously World World Series champions. They they have everything that they need. And also a pretty good pitcher, but I think they'll be okay. I'm going Astros. Seems simple for me. Just flip-flop that. Yeah, the Rangers. I had the Rangers winning it, so I'm going to the Astros as wild card. All right. I got the Rays. I mean, they, they always figure it out. Mm. They always figure out to have a good season. They know what they're doing. Well scouted. You look at the lineup, you're like, ah, oh, this isn't. Uh... And, of course, they're going to have the AL MVP this year in Richie Palacio. So, give me the oh, Rays as my second wild wrong. card. Yep. You're not wrong. Yeah. All right, Marsh, third wild card. Third wild card is Mama Rivers is Blue Jays. All right. Yeah, there you go. They're my Mama. third wild card team. Oh, Mumsy, she'll be happy mm-hmm. hearing that. Yep. I got the Blue Jays as well. I got the Tampa Bay Rays not in the playoffs. I don't, Yeah. Same. I don't think they make it this year. Yep. Death they taxes and the Rays back. making the playoffs, boys. Nah, I mean, it's right, it is right mm-hmm. it in pen. Nah, nah, nah. It's pencil. Uh, uh, Mom, Jamie, I love you, but, but I'm <laughs> oh, not going with your Blue Jays. Oh, oh, wow. I'm going with the Mariners on this one. Okay, yep. Uh, I got the Rangers. Just out of respect to them winning the damn World Series a year ago. And obviously, they still got chock full of uh, talent offensively. Some decent pitching. I, I'm not in love with Texas's pitching, so that's why I got him as the third wild card. All right, Marsh, what do you got in the pennant? I have the Astros. I have the Astros winning the American League pennant, and I have a rematch of a few World Series ago, the Braves and the Astros in the World Series. Okay, Kerry? I got the Astros um, as well. They are my my team that I think going to come out of the AL side. And I actually – I. I I wouldn't be surprised if they're playing some. Uh, uh, probably playing the Yankees in the in the pennant. ALCS. Yep. All right. We're picking the winner, AL winner. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm going with the Rangers. Rangers. Yep. I have the Mariners over the Rangers. You're 
really banking it. I'm going to Seattle. <laughs> this hey, is your White Sox pick. A year ago, I had the White Sox because I love their pitching. Yeah, they, they, this they, year, I love Seattle's pitching. Damn, that Worked sucks out. that they I'm won't make it. You ruined the White Sox <laughs> pitch. I, I literally ruined the White Sox. Lance will never, never forgive you. The White Sox will never be daughters. the same after yeah, what they, I did to them yeah, last you, year. You did that. Yeah. Yeah, certainly did. So, uh, and I got the Braves beating the Mariners in the World Series. Marsh, you had said, I have Braves, Astros in the World Series. I think the Braves get it done. I think the Braves win the World Series again against the Astros. Jamie, I got Braves, Rangers, Braves take it. Braves, yeah. Uh, who did I say? I had the Astros and the Dodgers. Yep. Who takes it? Dodgers. Dodgers. You. Wow. That's disgusting. I done mm-hmm. paid all this money uh, on opening day. You no think less. I'm doing? On opening Here we day. Go. Opening day, no less. Uh, Carry right in everybody's face with the Dodgers pick. This is just, it's disgusting. Second uh, most disgusting thing I heard today. Of course, number one with BK and Ferrario and the T Bone stealing um, Marsh's yeah, work and claiming it as their own. Very disgusting. Yeah. Terrible behavior. Will it be difficult to manage the minutes of young players while also playing for your playoff lives? This is something we discussed a couple of weeks ago with our guy Drew Bannister, or at least for him. How much does that change moving forward now that the Blues are winding down? We'll have that discussion next on 101 ESPN. Cheap, cheap, fun, fun. Let's get dirty here on opening day. Got the Cardinals on there right now. Maybe you want to stop by your favorite dirt cheap, pick up some spirits, maybe some of the the excellent beers or the wine choices that they have over there. They are St. Louis's one-stop party shop for several reasons. Uh, And the staff over there is fantastic. Ask them questions about whether it's a vodka or tequila or the bourbon category, which is obviously a very popular category. And Dirt Cheap has great selections available at every location. And uh, one thing I can tell you is that the name Dirt Cheap talks about the price, not the product. The product there, they've got lots of high-end spirits and, and all the best beers and the wines, everything you're looking for, Dirt Cheap has you covered. And they also have you covered if you can't get to Dirt Cheap. All you have to do is download the Dirt Cheap app and you can get on there. There's more sales, there's giveaways, there's clubs, there's raffles, all sorts of things available on the app. And whatever's in store, they have available for you on the app. And then you can either pick it up curbside or you can have it delivered to your home, which is super convenient. You end up getting home just in time for first pitch. Don't worry about it. You got your favorite beer available because of Dirt Cheap and their app. So please visit them. Uh, Tell them Jamie Rivers sent you in. And have fun out there, but be careful, everybody.
on the Flames tonight. Our coverage starting right here on 101 ESPN with the pregame show starting at 6 o'clock. Blues and Flames. It's going to be difficult, Kerry, and we Jamie's changing right now because he's got uh, Bally Sports Midwest, but he'll join us here in a second. Will it be difficult to manage the minutes of young players while also playing for your playoff lives? Uh, this is an an enviable, en- enviable position for Drew Bannister as an interim coach trying to earn you know earn an opportunity to be the full-time coach he's got young players mixing with the line he's got injured players now and oh by the way you're tasked with getting young guys some more reps while also still fighting for a playoff spot i i I don't envy drew banister's position at all jamie and it really hasn't changed since a couple of weeks ago when we talked about this yeah if anything else though it's it it's kind of become more clear as to what the direction is right now because Oscar Sundquist going down with the injury that he ended up with, like, not that you're forced, but you're forced now to go with some younger guys in the lineup. And so if you're Drew Bannister, it's not the pressure of, like, ah, am I coaching to win or am I coaching to develop? Now you're, just, you're still coaching to win, but now your players are developing while coaching to win. So it, it is an easier scenario, I think, uh, from a coach's standpoint. But it is going to be interesting to see you know how he manages the minutes like right now the blues still mathematically alive there's six points back of the vegas golden knights which it's not ideal i'm not sitting here saying oh that's what they got right where they want them no they don't it's it's going to be a, a tough go but that being said you're still in the hunt so to say mm-hmm. so now it's going to be how do you deploy your players how do you mix up the lines how do you continue to try and win and then if for some reason you fall behind even more let's say you don't win tonight and vegas does now it's eight points like things are starting to look worse yeah then what the what's the ratio of minutes for your players does zach bolduke now all of a sudden get promoted to one of the power play units which i can't believe he hasn't really been this year Mm -hmm. he's gotten some spot duty on that second unit but you know nothing substantial to say that he's had that chance um, but at what point, where does the dam break is where I'm thinking. Like, how far out of the playoffs do you have to be to where you're like, yeah, you know what, we're going with this mm. now. And hopefully they don't have to do that. <laughs> hopefully they're clinging right on to the very end and they're two to four points out right to the last few games of the season. You know, that to me would be a good case scenario. But still, nonetheless, I think as a coaching staff, you, you have to be prepared for both directions do you think it's harder on the coaching staff or on the players the veteran players that are playing on on the lines with those guys or or just playing in these games trying to understand that we got these younger guys and we may have to do a little bit more trying to win these games yeah i think it falls on the veteran guys to play better Mm -hmm. quite honestly like i i knew at times when young guys were nipping at my heels and I had a choice to either just be like, well, you know, whatever. Well, they're just playing the young guys. Or force them to not pick me right. as one of the guys that they're going to play the young guys in lieu of. Right. And if you're the Blues roster, you look at the forwards, you can kind of see who could be at risk for ice time lost. And if you're one of those guys, elevate your game. Elevate your game so the coaching staff can't make a change. Like, let's go back just to that, that, that little winning streak that they had there. Started in Boston. Zach Dean had been called up earlier that day. He arrived Mm -hmm. in Boston. And Coach Drew Bannister put out a lineup that night. I can tell you this with my, I guess, my intuition. I don't know because I didn't talk to Drew about this. But the plan was to get Zach Dean in the lineup as soon as possible. Right. And there were a certain number of players that were, we'll call it, at risk. Mm -hmm. The players that were at risk had a hell of a night in Boston. (laughs) The line that they played on had three goals. Right. You can figure out who the hell those players are by what I just said. So it forced Drew Bannister to not play Zach Dean. Are you going to change the lineup after that? No. Then you go on to the next game, and everybody played good again, and you won again. Zach Dean has to sit on the outside. It got to a point where you finally had to play him anyways. Right. And Oscar Sundquist happened to be the guy that – Drew Bannister wanted to give a rest to or whatever it is. But uh, 
that's the way to solve the problem. If you're a keep veteran guy, is keep playing your butt off. Right. And now not all of them will be successful, just the way it is. Not all of them will be able to fend off the young guys, so to say. Mm -hmm. But it, it, this is what you have to do. And if you're the young guys, you're kicking the front door open, man. You, you can't sit in the background anymore. Like if you're Zach Bolduc, Zach Dean, uh, Matthew Kessel, Scott Perunovich, all these younger guys, Jake Neighbors, although Jake Neighbors does it already, but make it so that the coaches have to play you, mm -hmm. that they want to play you above certain guys. That's how you create that healthy competition within a group, and that's how you create that competitive edge to your group is because nobody wants to fail. They all want to outplay the guy beside them, which is okay. It's okay to want to outplay your teammate. It's fine as long as you guys are playing in the same direction. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So uh, I don't mind it. Jamie, how would you assess Drew Bannister, the, the job that he's done since taking over for Craig Ruby? Now, I'm not asking you to assess somebody that was that was stepping into a rough a rough spot. He's taking over from – he's taking over for the only head coach that had won a cup here. Obviously a tough, tough job to be pulled out of his, his current situation, come up to the Blues. They weren't playing well. It's a tough spot. So, like, let's just – you know, push that aside, okay? When you're judged... Yeah, but I don't think you can. Because I, I think you, it all goes hand in hand, Anthony. But I want you to do the assessment from the standpoint of things that you have really liked and then things that might not be in his control, but something that the Blues are going to need more of, of, of a yeah. head coach. Does that make sense? It does. I, I know what you're trying to ask me, but I, I still have to default right back to what you said because... It's not like he was given a training camp. It's not like he had input on free agents or signings or anything. Like none yeah. of that. It was like, here's your team. By the way, this team is failing. Yeah. And oh, by the way, the coach that you're replacing, maybe the most favorite coach this organization has ever had. Mm -hmm. uh, good luck. Like that changes how you coach. It does. It changes, and it also changes when you're an interim, because now you're still taking your marching orders from up above. Like, when you're Craig Berube and Doug Armstrong comes down with an idea, you can kind of be like, yeah, maybe. Yeah. Maybe not. See how that works See out. how that works. But when you're Drew Bannister and the front office, whomever it may be, has an idea of players or ice time or line combinations or things like that, yeah, you're kind of in a position to where you have to accept the advice, we'll call it, or the thoughts and then process it, and then I guess in real time you either do it or you don't because during the game you have the ultimate say as the head coach. So if I'm going to assess Drew Bannister, I have to take in all of those elements and see, you know, for me, the job he's done. I think he's done a good job. I think that the press conference that Army had when he fired Chief was we're going to be about accountability, and, and, you know, we want to stress accountability and compete and all these things. Drew Bannister comes in as the interim head coach, first gig, and he starts sitting guys. Mm -hmm. Not just anybody. Pavel Buchnevich, Jordan Cairo, Robert Thomas. He starts to sit impactful players to promote accountability. And this team has gotten better under Drew Bannister. Their record is much better under Drew Bannister than it was Craig Berube. Doesn't mean they don't love Chief. Still love him dearly. It just wasn't working. Right. The power play is night and day from what it was under Chief. No doubt. Now, was that just a process of, like, evolution? Like, it was bound to happen at some point because you had the players that were too good to fail? Maybe to some degree. But Maybe. Yeah. But it doesn't matter because it changed. Mm -hmm. So when I look at Drew Bannister, a good young coach, I'd like to think that he'd get an opportunity. Um, but, you know, that's to be determined. Mm -hmm. It also is based on what Army's expectations were for Drew Bannister. Did he bring him in to just ride out the ship for the rest of the year? Is it really an audition? Does he really see a future with Drew Bannister behind the bench? Only Army knows the answer to those questions. You were talking about the line combinations, and the, the first line has kind of changed often. You had Booch Navis go down, you have Kyrou going down. Is this the best combination for Thomas with Booch Navis and, 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 and Neighbors on the same line with him? Uh, I think it might be right now. You know, uh, you know, Jake Neighbors brings a lot more blue collar mm. to that line, um, but at the same token, you know, he doesn't have the the speed and the dynamic ability of a Jordan Kyrou. Uh, but then Jordan Cairo doesn't have the consistency of a Jake Neighbor. So it, it's kind of like, what version do you want to make that right. line? We haven't seen a lot of this line yet. 
I am excited to see how they play tonight against Calgary. I think Jake Neighbors has earned every frigging opportunity to play on that line. I see Pavel Buchnevich back on the wing. We talked about it yesterday. <laughs> I said uh, I think we need to get him back on the wing. He's back there. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I am excited to see that line tonight. I'm also excited to see you know, Braden Shen back at center ice where he's most comfortable. And Brandon Saad, he's scored some big goals here lately, man. He scored some game tires, game winning, overtime goals. He's picking it up too. So they're going to need both of those lines going if they're going to have any chance of reeling in the Vegas Golden Knights who are six points ahead of them right now. Blues Flames pregame starting right here on 101 ESPN at 6 o'clock in about 20 minutes or so. We'll have Jamie's keys to victory for the Blues and the first goal of the game. But Hot Take Hot Garbage is next. If you have a hot take or hot garbage for us, 314-399-9646 is the Air Comfort Service text line. Send them there, and then we'll play the game next in the fast lane. When it comes to Mosby Building Arts, they're my pals, and I love going with them for any home remodeling project because they are the right remodeling uh, project. They they are the right remodeling company, I should say. They're fantastic. And if you need a new bathroom or you want to do new windows for your home, now is the time to call Mosby because they got their spring refresh sale. That's $1,000 off bathroom remodels plus low monthly payments if you want to finance, 10% off windows or 12 months, no payments on new windows. So imagine upgrading your windows, which as if you've ever done it before, if you've seen somebody else do it, it can upgrade the look and feel of your entire home. Spring refresh sale, again, $1,000 off bathrooms plus low monthly payments or 10% off windows or 12 month payments when it comes to new windows, but you do have to call before April 30th. So throughout the month of April, call Mosby. They're fantastic. And Mosby, I say they're the right remodeling company because they get it right the first time. They're not somebody that that has a million different projectors or, or contractors, I should say, that they, you know, project out and they're like, hey, we're going to go with this this guy to do the plumbing and this person to do the elect- the electric and then the electrician doesn't show up in time and then your whole project is a mess. No, everybody's in-house at Mosby. They do a tremendous job. Please give them the call. Tell them Stalter sent you. Mosby Building Arts, they're, they're incredible. No project is too big or too small for Mosby. Call Mosby.com, 314-909-1800. Again, 314-909-1800. Mosby Building Arts, the right remodeling company.
101 ESPN Sports Center. I'm Andrew Marsh. It's time for a Sports Center update brought to you by Saliga Heating and Cooling. Happy opening day. The Cardinals are taking on the Dodgers. Bottom of the first inning. The Dodgers are leading two to nothing as the Cardinals are trying to get out of the bottom of the first. We'll keep you updated on today's game throughout the remainder of the show. The Blues, we just talked about the Blues. They'll take on the Calgary Flames tonight. Pre-game starts at 6, puck drop is at 7, and you can catch all the action right here on 101 ESPN. Coming up next, we have hot take or hot garbage. So if you have a hot take you want to send our way, do so using the Air Comfort Service text line 314-399-9646. Hot take or hot garbage coming up next. I'm Andrew Marsh. And this Sports Center update is brought to you by Saliga. Heating and cooling. Independent American Standard Heating and Air Conditioning Dealer. ESPN time to play hot take or hot garbage. Some of you may think that Cardinal season is already hot garbage. Mm. I know our friend Josh Innes hey, does. Hey, listen. It's the first inning. Not like we saw it's this last year. First week of the season. Not like we saw this happen last year. First inning. Down two. Yeah, two nothing. Two nothing. Miles Michael is through about 30 pitches in the first inning. Mm-hmm. He'll last a couple more. 30, 30 pitches or something? Like 28, 29. Oh Walked Mookie Betts, gave up a double to Shohei. Fortunately for the Cardinals, mm. Shohei <laughs> overran <laughs> second base, bases. thinking Mookie Betts was being sent home, so they got a free out there. Uh, from there, somehow, uh, Ollie brought in the infields. First, first inning of the first game of the season, brought in the infields. Will Smith got one through, or Freddie Freeman. Freddie, Freddie Freeman. Freeman got one through. Then Will Smith got one over the shortstop set. I mean, it was just... Some some people like were complaining to us for a while there. You guys are just so snarky about the Cardinal season. What about the optimism? There's your optimism. Uh, there's, there's your optimism. Anthony, why would the infield be playing in there? Just out of curiosity. So in that spot, what was it? There was first and third. I know they're like turn two. No, it was just right? runner on third. That was it. But try, like, what are you doing there? The, the only reason would be to, to knock the ball down and hold Mookie Betts at Why? third. Now you got two outs. Why? So you don't give up a run in the first inning. You got to win. But you what got, happened? No, you want to know? I mean, that's that would be it. But what happened anyway? The, the, the ball, ball got right snuck through, through. and now soft you got contact because you were, yeah. you were <laughs> that's in that soft right. contact. Soft contact. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're trying to, the, the only reason there is to save a run and the, to save a run and get to two outs. And then you can move everybody back and you get the third out and get out of it. But, I mean, instead of one allowing potentially one run, you gave up two. So, not gr- not mm. great. Carrie's guy just popped out. Oh. He was, yeah, you couldn't even hide it. You almost cussed. <laughs> you can see it in your face. Carrie's taking yeah. a drink Amazing, out of his Gatorade man. jug over there. Oh. <laughs> this city, I, I will say this, this city is incredible, right, with baseball. Because this is the first game of the season. We're not even through. It's a big game. We're not even through the top of the second. <laughs> and we're already ticked off. There's 162 games, and we're already ticked Anthony, off. The did you, passion. It will be did you watch baseball? Be. Did you watch the Cardinals last year? I did. All right. Oh, sorry well, about that. First what, 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 when 35 we, games. What do we give up? 40, oh, 40 June? 60 All-star games game. in. Did no, you, 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 you didn't make it that far. No. no. I, no uh, I don't think we did. We right. watched because we have to, but you were you were probably watching with other things going on in the background, like well, that's phone sure. and yeah. bourbon. Bourbon mm-hmm. for you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Jamie likes to watch the games out on uh, in the backyard. I do, actually. Yeah. I do. The neighbors sometimes don't. Well, actually, they do appreciate it. <laughs> I'm sure they do. <laughs> yeah. 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 They I'm love sure to see that do. you're dialed in. They, yeah. they definitely mm-hmm. do. They like the intensity. Yeah. Mm-hmm. For Give sure. Your best effort. All right, Marsh. What do we got for hot take or hot garbage? All right, from the 319, hot take or hot garbage. The Cardinals are going to have regrets on not signing a top starting pitcher after the first two series. Hot uh, garbage. They already do. They they signed one. He's hurt. Miles Michael is wasn't supposed to be the opening day starter. No, but that's the problem. Okay. Well, you're, when you're right, you're right. Is, just... Imagine if you'd have had Montgomery to be this guy. Whoa. What you know they couldn't afford him. Yo, yeah, they actually couldn't. No, have. no, he 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 signed right like a five year deal mm. for like 
180, 180, 200 million, right? No, no Kerry. Uh, no, no, no. That's, that was one year, 25, with a second year option at 25. <laughs> Wait, that's what he signed for? Yep. So basically a one year. So he signed, but he signed like a couple months ago. The Cardinals yeah, were out on that. Wait, what? A couple days ago. A couple days ago? Mm-hmm. Jordan Montgomery? Yeah, that's the pitcher the that was here? The lefty, yeah. The one that just won the World Series? Yeah, that guy. Wow. Well, I don't know what to tell you. Nope. Good luck. It's not fun. <laughs> Hot take or hot garbage from the 636. Zach Thompson has an excellent year with an ERA of 3.5 to 4. Hot take. I like that. I like I like uh, Zach Thompson a lot. I think he profiles as kind of a middle ro- middle of the rotation guy, and you may think that's a knock. It's, it's not. The Cardinals still need top-end guys, but that doesn't – you don't have to overlook the fact that Zach Thompson probably profiles as a 3 or 4 for you. I think that's great. And I think he's got, you know, good stuff. He, he keeps the ball in the yard. He doesn't walk, guys. I don't think that's a – I don't think that's hot garbage. I think that's a hot take. No, it's a hot take for me. I, I think he can actually do that. Um, problem is he might be your – your best one by the time yeah. your second best pitcher when it's all said and done. We got, we got, it's time. It's too early. I, your face does not say Carrie, that at all. Oh, yeah, you don't have to. Carrie's battling right now. There's I'm, two versions I, of Carrie. One wants to believe and the other one wants to hate. And they're just colliding. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm struggling right now. Did they strike out the side? No. Mm-hmm. No, because your guy popped out. Oh, he did pop out. Yeah. Tyler Glass now 98, 98 on the black. Got it. Got Jordan Walker. I tell you what, is that good? Nah, that's a good pitch for, the for Dodgers. him. <laughs> Glass now. Mm. The sliders. Who could have been? A, who was available? Hey, you hush your mouth. <laughs> he was available. <laughs> he was. You hush your mouth. Jamie. I don't know if he was available to the Cardinals, you but all... he was available. Well, no, because he wanted more than one year deal. Oh, yeah. He's not old enough either. That's true. He doesn't qualify. <laughs> great point. That's a great point. And he'd never Jamie. been a cardinal before. And he didn't want and to be. Here. Didn't know, well, we didn't know. He didn't know. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't call know. them. Well, that doesn't matter. You can trade for a guy. No. Yeah, they got it. They still got a. They have a rule book. They got a rule book. Much like Marsh. Jamie does. They still. He still has <laughs> to say, right. "Hey, I want to be a cardinal." Oh man. All right, this one comes from our friend Chauncey. Hot take or hot garbage? Nolan Gorman will lead the team in home runs this season. Hot take. Well, yeah, you got to make sure he's healthy. I'll say Arnado. <laughs> Nolan Arnado. I'll say Nolan him. Gorman should lead the team in home runs. Uh, if he doesn't, it's I probably going to be a bad season. I don't think he's going to play as many games as some of the other boppers. I think that he'll, he'll play more games if he's healthy, but I don't think he'll play as many as. Arenado or Goldie. I, I picked Goldie yesterday to lead this team in home runs, and I stand by it. It's a contract year for Goldie. He's coming off a meh year last year. I, I think that he puts together a pretty good season. By the way, Josh Ennis is now in the snake pit right now. <laughs> <laughs> this is fantastic. He's having dialogue with the snake pit. He is totally in the snake pit right Food now. Is. Right behind us. Right next like, door. Yeah. This is Casey's studio right here. Right, right here next to us. <laughs> hey, friends. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's oh, move away. Are you talking about the infield being drawn in? Yes. Oh, absolutely. Yes. Yes. That was his first message. That is awesome. God love you, Josh. <laughs> Uh, from the 618, hot take or hot garbage, Dak Prescott wins a Super Bowl before Barry Bonds and Pete Rose get into the Hall of Fame. <laughs> you got to say hot take on that. <laughs> That's never. To. What was it? I was reading Josh Innes' takes there for a second. <laughs> um, Dak Prescott Dak wins, Prescott a, Super wins a Super Bowl before Barry, Barry Bonds, Bonds and, and, Pete Rose. and Pete Rose get into the Hall of Fame. Hall of Fame. I wonder if this Otani thing helps or hurts Pete Rose. I mean, I think it helps him from the standpoint of if see? Shohei Otani did bad. See what I was see? He has company now. <laughs> <laughs> you and think like, they would like give Shohei a lifetime ban? Yeah. If he bet, if he bet on baseball, yeah. I don't. I don't see. Here's the then problem. Then you have to. Then you have to. Yeah. Then you, you know have what Pete? Give... What you did back then? What? <laughs> I wasn't really that bad. Come on in. You're welcome. Well, and yeah. how about how pissed off do you think Pete Rose is? Now watching every game sponsored by some gambling company, this, that. Yeah, I'm sure. The league, the website, everything. They've got MLB Network has Mm. their their bets of the day and all this stuff. You can go to FanDuel and and, and bet every time you Mm. want. Use promo code FAST, of course. Indeed. He was 
betting on his own team, though. To win. To, to win. win. That's balls right there. I'm going to win every game. Was, if you bet 162 always, times was he and bet to win. Betting on his he team? said he was, Anthony. Oh, and, yeah, we should take him for his word. <laughs> so when he wasn't betting on his own team. He, he wasn't was betting on that He wasn't said. betting on them at all. He didn't bet against his team. He didn't. But yeah. when he didn't bet on his team, what does that say? <laughs> I just, I'm not betting on us today, fellas. Maybe, just, maybe he forgot to put his bet in. Let's just, know. let's just <laughs> let's just walk through this for a second. So Pete Pete Rose, the manager of the Reds, uses his three best bullpen arms mm-hmm. one night uh-huh. when he has his own team. Uh huh. Really grinds through his pen one day, and then the next day he goes, you know what? I just, I just won't play it. He woke up late, didn't have time yeah. to get the bet in. That, that I'm just saying. Do you think happens. he was uh, doing like same game parlays? Do you think uh, they had that back there? Sure. <laughs> yeah, he had like a 10 leg parlay yeah. going for sure. <laughs> Imagine when they didn't hit. Uh, oh, man. <laughs> what the hell are you doing? Yeah. Not great. Oh, that's bad. All right. That's hot take or hot garbage. You still reading his, his stuff? <laughs> Josh is still hot in the snake pit. He goes, I have a hot take. What if is he, it? If you suck at sports, you shouldn't be allowed to have ironic facial hair. <laughs> He's talking about Mike Liss. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. All right, what do you think? Hot take or hot garbage? I say hot take. Hot take. You better be good to back it up. I, I agree with that. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, you can't, you can't be the guy that's, like, kind of... You know, like imagine, hey, look, Troy, fun. imagine Troy Palomalu if he sucked right. with all that hair. Oh, right. like, no, you can't do that. No. Can't but do that, that was different. That was that was a cultural thing. Right? Yeah. I, mean, I just use an example of a visual, right. Anthony. You gotta, God, you get so I'm, literal. Well, I'm just saying. Jesus. It's Never man. mind. Like Troy, like Miles Michaelis doesn't have he to wear a great the porn mustache. stash. Mm-hmm. It's a great stash. And he's got that... Uh, that uh, Run DMC gold chain on yeah. him too. Yeah, with the high socks. The high socks. Like, he's got a look to him that you better be good. <laughs> Over, under. <laughs> this, reminds, <laughs> this reminds me of Bob Euchre in Major League Two with Parkman. When, yeah. when, when he was with the Indians, he's like, he's like, it drives the women in Cleveland crazy. <laughs> and then he's back with the White Sox. He goes, makes the women in Cleveland puke. <laughs> His Bob, wiggle. Exactly, yeah. It's a little Parkman shimmy there. Oh, got to be careful. Got shocked again. All right. Jamie's keys to victory tonight for the Blues against the Flames and the first goal of the game next. You've heard him on national radio. You've seen him on every major network on television. He's Kevin Todd from the sportsbrokers.com. Today, Kevin is releasing his college basketball tournament game of the year. Free on a recorded message. Kevin absolutely loves this matchup. To get this winner, call 888-320-7517. It's absolutely free on a recorded message. If you're looking for dogs that win outright in favorites that cruise to victory, Kevin Todd is your guy. The industry standard is set by Kevin Todd. Get today's winner absolutely free. That's right, absolutely Absolutely free on a recorded message. Call 888-320-7517. Kevin Todd and the sports brokers love this game. Get his college basketball tournament game of the year absolutely free right now. Call 888-320-7517. That's 888-320-7517. Kevin Todd turns outcomes into incomes. Get this winner absolutely free. 888-320-7517. Kevin loves this game. Call now 888-320-7517. Absolutely free on a recorded message. If you are currently thinking about renovating your kitchen, your bathroom, or maybe that outdoor living space with the weather becoming a lot nicer, I know I love it outside, well, choose E&B Granite. With over two decades of family ownership and operation, E&B Granite is St. Louis's trusted name when it comes to all of those renovations. Uh, and they're backed by a skilled team of professional fabricators, installers, and in-house design staff. E&B Granite ensures you top-notch craftsmanship, personalized service, and prices you won't find with those big box stores. Yes, all of that is true. I can tell you from my own personal experience with E&B Granite, it was awesome. 
walked into the showroom down at 30, 6135 Manchester Avenue. Didn't really know what I wanted to do with my kitchen, was totally redoing everything. Sales representative got there, uh, sat down, talked to me, showed me options, took me into the back where the countertops are all at, where you can see the big slabs, so it's not just like some little sample size. Everything was very personalized, and the customer service was absolutely fantastic and the installation was seamless loved everything about it and they left me with a showroom kitchen and i can't wait to do more with e and b granite they are the best and you give them a call and book an appointment tell them that jamie rivers sent you in that number is 314-645-9300 that's 314-645-9300 or you can visit enbgranite.com ESPN, 2 nothing Dodgers over the Cardinals. You're doing great, Anthony. <laughs> right, the top listen. of the third. <laughs> there are some other things oh, that take place during breaks. <laughs> are, but they are nothing short of amazing. Yeah. Some of the things you learn that you never knew. We learn about each other, mm. our quirks, mm. our likes and our dislikes. Guys, yeah. <laughs> I'd like to say two things. <laughs> First, based on what Gary just said, thank you, <laughs> and you're welcome. Fair enough. Well said, Jamie. Definitely free zone here, brother. Yes. Uh, thank now, God. Now, Gary, uh, Gary, be honest. You've been on the show now for, what, three months? Yeah. You started yeah. early January? Well, yeah. it's December, essentially, yeah, so yeah, we'll, yeah. we'll just say three months, right? Mm -hmm. How many times have you th thought of And uh, you're, you're among friends. How many times have you thought to yourself, why? Why? <laughs> Why did I, why did I agree to this? I have thought a few times, what the hell just happened? Yeah, sure. More than why? Well, that's that's every hour. More, more so, like, what the hell? What? Yeah. What is going What's on? What's wrong? With I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, I think that same thing all the time. Of course, I say it to myself. Yeah. Uh, no, but you nah, go home. No regret. 
you know, I bet you, you better you not. A, yeah, yeah, I love it. You have a nice dinner. You go, yeah. go work out, and you're driving home. And you're I wouldn't like, be thinking about this radio show over dinner. Well, the, the thoughts just pop into his head. Nah, what what it, am I doing? I don't have any any thoughts like that. Okay. All right, more, more so just what the hell just happened. Yeah. yeah. At right. times. Not every day. But, but there are some days. days. I'm like, what the hell? Yeah. Okay. Like most days. Cool. Yeah. I like that you're looking in Anthony's direction too. I don't. I don't disagree. <laughs> we haven't looked at Marshy. Marshy is the again. He's the he's adult the young, in the room. He's why well, he's the younger brother. Yeah, the, we're working the with four him. brothers. Yeah, the yeah. four we brothers. We figured that out. Don't worry. Yep. Yeah. There will be a day where Marshy has a Marshy, <laughs> and he will educate said Marshy just like we have. So, so Carrie He'll brought up. Forward. Didn't you say that other brother dies? Well, hold on, hold on now, Carrie. Carrie brought up. Uh, we have our own movie though. Uh, Carrie brought up the movie Four Brothers, which is that's what that's what we are here yeah. in the uh, the fast lane, the Four Brothers. Um, <laughs> and you said you're like, hey, Jamie, you're you're Mark Wahlberg, you're yeah. the, you're the oldest brother. And I looked up on Wikipedia, it says the oldest of the Mercers, lifelong criminal, oh hot tempered, former hockey hockey league player. There you go. No, it's yeah. not. Yeah. 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 Shut up. Look, shut your face. That's him. Oh, my God. <laughs> All right. Well, I got no pushback. Yeah. <laughs> got no uh, the, pushback. And, and I didn't see this, but the youngest brother, which would be Marsh, youngest uh, youngest brother, aspiring rock musician. Oh, yeah. wow. See? Look at that. Part of the AA holes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. Now the other ones, I don't know. They fit ish. <laughs> he tried to get out of the one that's him. Read the read which the one. Which one is him? Read, read, read well, it. Well, no, I mean, if you go in Are order, you an outcast? If you go in, like, he, birth he, order. Is he outcast? Yes, he, he's Andre 3000, but he didn't want to be. Well, because you're the. You, you, but it's, it's, a, it's Andre Jamie. 3000 is the family man. Yeah, he is. That. But he, but he doesn't want second. to be involved. He in doesn't the want to anymore. do any of this. But, that's right. the, but that should be Carrie. Oh. No, have you seen Carrie? <laughs> he had a dog collar on the other day. <laughs> <laughs> you did. I saw that on the on yeah. the Instagram. I was like, is that Carrie or is that uh, a bulldog? Yeah. Uh, both. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't think I saw that? I was like, I see what's going on here. <laughs> All right. So you what? You're, you, he's Tyrese. Tyrese. Oh, of course he's Tyrese. He's, I'm Tyrese. Oh, okay. Yeah. You're Andre. I was just going in, in like birth order because. Uh, Jamie, you, me, then Marsh, but yeah, we kind of have to go. With we got to go off the personality. Yeah. So I'm the construction worker and the the family, family man. blue collar guy. Family there you guy. go. All right. so okay, that you're Missing trying me. to not be involved, but right. when push comes to shove, you I'm get there. involved. Okay, yeah. that's fair. That seems pretty damn accurate. That's that, fair. I think it is yep. too. Okay, there you go. Yeah. Four brothers. Now we only have one <laughs> brother, but. It still fits. Yeah, we but they the had brothers. two brothers. They did. They did have yeah, two. And they, they two. were four brothers. Yeah. It doesn't matter. I'm Italian, so I'm <laughs> as close as it can be, you know? First Nations here, so, <laughs> you know, whatever you want. <laughs> so I'm kind of in the middle of all of it, too. Got this nice potpourri of ethnicity in here. Marcy is, Marcy is still bothered by the fact that the brother died in the movie. He, well, it's he, a young guy. It's the one everybody's rooting for. Marcy, just think you about know? this, though. You died so we could live. <laughs> Okay, yeah, that makes me feel You're a lot better. Great. You're a hero. You're a hero, right? right? In the movie. <laughs> yep. Did he, like, sacrifice himself? I'm sure he did. Kind of. Kind of. I haven't kind seen of, the movie. Kind I saw of. it years and years it. ago, but I'm sure he did. It was on TV not too long ago, and I stopped to watch it. I like the movie. It's a good yeah. movie. There you go. All right, Jamie, your keys to victory tonight. <laughs> uh, big start for the Blues. We talked about it. You got to forget about last game. Get on your game early. Get in on the forecheck. Calgary doesn't really want to be there, so <laughs> give them every reason to fold up tent and go back to Canada. Yeah. Uh, I think that uh, at your fourth line is going to be a pivotal. Oscar Sundquist is out of the game. Zach Dean would like to see him you know, get that motor going. Everybody talks about how fast he is and uh, likes to get on the forecheck. I think we need to see that early. And certainly goaltending. If you're going to have any chance to win and to close the gap and to win out maybe even, your goaltenders have to be on their game. And it's no different tonight for Jordan Bennington. There you have it. Keys to victory. <laughs> Let's go, boys. We need you to score more goals. Get those loose pucks. Thomas to Cairo. Score! Huh. Speaking of score. Oh, things went my. really quiet is, there for a mm. second. What happened, guys? It toggled. Uh, it toggled on. It I toggled. was reading the 6 1 hate real quick. He says, Miles down 3 0. Then yeah. it went really quiet. What happened, guys? It, uh, it, well, it's, oh, boy. it's not 3 0. Quick, quick update. Yeah, they yeah, were down 2 0. That's why actually I turned the music down. They yeah. were down 2 0 to start the inning. And then Mookie oh. Betts homered, hit a solo shot. 
Uh, Shohei Otani got on. I, I didn't he see walked. how he got. He, wa he, oh, walked. he walked. There you go. So he walked. And then Freddie Freeman hit an absolute <sighs> missile to right center for a two-run shot. Two years and in a row, Miles not going to make it out of the third inning. Nope. Five nothing now. Dodgers over the Cardinals. Well, he didn't mm. crush it. He hit an absolute seed <laughs> that barely left the ground. So mm. five nothing bottom of the third. Uh, good news for Miles. Mm. He still yeah, what? he still has yet to record an out in Ooh. the third inning. Mm. Should oh, we get back to the that. to the goal? Yeah, let's yeah, do that. Let's, yeah, yeah, let's yeah, talk yeah, about yeah, hockey. Yeah, let's, yeah. Yeah. let's talk about hockey. Yeah. How about the blues, huh? Yeah. This place. Yes. yes. Let's go, boys. We need you to score more goals. Get those loose pucks. Thomas to Cairo. Score. Goal. No big deal. Game winner. All right, Jamie, tell us who's going to score the first goal tonight. Jake Neighbors, thank you. Yeah, oh, nah, come on. Check, please. You just, come on. You just took Kerry's guy. I know, I knew it. I could see Kerry's wheels spinning. He always on. takes Jake Neighbors. I do. I mean, it's, it's his guy. That's what I He's did. standing uh, in front of the net. Why I would not? I did this to you. All right, I appreciate it. <laughs> Look at my face. <laughs> I did this to you. All right, who's it on me? Yep. I'm going to go Pavel Bucinavich. Oh, right. Bucci. All right. Yeah. Hmm. I got to keep this this going. I, I got Brandon Sod correct last game. Yeah, you I'm did. I'm gonna go with Zach Bolduke. Oh, oh, right. It's another goal. Okay, that'd be nice. I'd like that for the kid. I got uh, Alexei Torpchenko. <laughs> good pick to score the first goal tonight. That's a good pick too. I like Torpo. Thank you. Hey, do you guys want my bet the board here tonight? Sure. All right. I don't, is anybody have, has anybody eyeballed the Golden Knights in the Winnipeg Jets game? So the only person that. Oh, did you win last night? Yeah. Baby. Oh, you did. The Senators yeah. rolled. You called that. Uh huh. You said they'd crush them, and they did. Take that. Yep. Uh huh. Way to go. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and then I won because Marsh won. lost. I won as well. And you won, so you're seven. You got seven mm. dubs. You I and I got eight dubs. Eight or nine. Or Marsh has got ten dubs. Keep chasing Marsh down. So yeah, Marsh, a couple do, days. You, do you want the Golden Knights tonight? No. I'm not taking that. I don't want the Golden Knights either. I'll take the Winnipeg Jets in there you that go. game. They're minus 120. The Winnipeg Hockey Jets yep. tonight for In Jamie. Winterpeg. In Winterpeg. We Winter also Robert. may need Jamie's beat the streak pick. Oh. What's that again? I forget the beat the streak. A player just oh, needs to get hit. a hit. We, I like to call uh, it the Luis Arise. Yes. Ice. I'll take Freddie Freeman. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Can't do that. Does it have to be a cardinal? <laughs> then no, good, no, 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 no. This is any any oh, game. Oh wait, no, it's not any game. It is Cardinals. It's Cardinals, Dodgers. yeah. Oh, so we so we won't do it then. You know, hey, we're what? already playing. He had Freddie Freeman. Yeah, mm. I had Mookie Betts. Yeah, I had Harry, Shohei. You had Shohei, yeah. and Kerry had Will Smith. It's so weird how none of us had Cardinals. Yeah, yeah. no. Yeah. Well, yeah, we had a feeling. Yeah, yeah, so, so, so we're uh, we're all up one L. Yeah. All right, sure. Jamie. Yeah. Have a great call tonight. I hope so. We'll see you tomorrow, bud. Thanks, buddy. Tonight, we got the Blues Flames pregame at 6 o'clock right here on 101 ESPN. Jamie's off to do a little uh, TV work. You can see him on Bally Sports Midwest. We've got the gauntlet next. Jamie Rivers, Anthony Stalter, back with you here. We're joined, as always, by our good buddy, Stewie, from Stewart's American Mortgage Corporation. And, and Stewie, we're talking about some cash out, refinancing. For me, it's all about the money, baby. You know what, Jamie? It's no fun. Money, money, money. Everybody needs money. I need money for this, my kids, my wife, my ex-wife, my <laughs> boyfriend, whatever it is. Everybody's always needing money. So the question becomes, where are you going to get it from? You want to build an addition on the house? You got to pay off those high interest credit. What are you going to do? So there's an option out there called a home equity line of credit. 
People think this is your answer. I'll go to the bank. I'll get a line of credit. It's like a credit card in my house. Everything will be fine and dandy. It's wrong. Those credit lines are adjustable rate mortgages. They're not fixed. They have no caps. You can go from 10% to 20% overnight. Nobody knows what's going to happen. And if you make the minimum payments, you're going to end up with the same principal balance in five years that you started off with. It's a bad way to go. Do a cash out refinance. Get a lower rate than that. Go ahead that line of credit. You'll be much better off. It's fixed. You're paying off principal and interest. You'll be way ahead of the game. There you go. So whatever you need the money for, call our guy Stewie. He's going to set up a program for you that's going to suit you. And it's going to save you money over the long haul, but it's also going to maybe free up some money, like Stewie said, if you need it at this moment. Give him a call, though, or text him at 314-324-4440. That's 314-324-4440. Or, Jamie, they can Google. The bag alone. Thanks, Stewie. Have a great one, guys. NMLS number 226715. categories one challenger can you master the gauntlet the gauntlet is powered by master your hometown source for business communications for more than 30 years visit mastor.com It's Fast Lane on 101 ESPN with Andrew Marsh and Carrie Davis and Anthony Stolton we welcome in Josh to the gauntlet what's up Josh Hello, fellas. How you doing today? Doing all right. How about yourself? Feeling pretty good. I'm ready to go. Good man, Josh. Right. Uh, is this your first time on this wonderful program? This is uh, my absolute first time, and it is a pleasure. No, Let's pleasure. Do this. Pleasure's on this side, Josh. All right, would you like to take on Andrew Marsh, Kerry Davis, or me today in the gauntlet? Uh, I'm going to take on my fellow Hazelwood Central alumni, Kerry ah, Davis. All right. All right. There go you go. All right. So Kerry's going to make his way into the cone of silence right now. Josh, you're going to tell Marsh to spin that wheel. We'll find out what category you get. Marsh, give that wheel a spin, please. Josh, what are you hoping for today? Uh, I'm hoping hockey. I'm really hoping it's not football. Okay. Hoping hockey. Doesn't want football. It is hockey today. Oh, there you go. Yeah, All right. Sir. Okay. Sometimes the wheel is cruel. Sometimes the wheel is kind. And today, for you, Josh, it it shows kind. So, Marsh, you're going to get us the launch codes. You're going to get four questions, all hockey-related. Jamie is going to get the same four questions today. Each question is worth two points, unless you or Kerry ask for the options. And if either of you ask for the options for that question, that question becomes worth one point. Sound good? Sounds good. All right, here we go. Josh, question one. With which team did Mark Stone begin his NHL career with? 
With which team did Mark Stone begin his NHL career with? Oh, shoot. He was with Ottawa. Um, I don't know if that's where he started. I'm just going to gonna shoot in the dark and say Ottawa. Final answer? Final answer. Question number two. Jordan Cairo has two hat tricks this season. One against the Minnesota Wild. The other against which Eastern Conference oh, Eastern Conference team? You get choked mm. up. <laughs> I only know about the one with the wild, so I'll take the options. Your options are the New York Rangers, the New Jersey Devils, or the New York Islanders. Let's go Islanders. Final, Final answer? answer? Yeah. All right, Josh, question three. In the 2019 playoffs, Sammy Blay scored his first career playoff goal and only goal in the 2019 playoffs. Who did he score that goal against which team oh man um oh this is tough I don't think it was Boston um was it in the Western Conference Final <sighs> I'm gonna take it before that I'm gonna say Dallas Stars final answer Question number four, including the Boston Bruins, who he has yet to play a game with, how many teams has Pat Maroon been on in his NHL career? Oh, boy, he's he's made his way around the league. Um, let's see. We got New Jersey. I think New Jersey. Edmonton. St. Louis. Uh, I feel like... Oh, shoot, where was he before he traded to Boston? I'm going to say how many teams other than Boston? Including the Boston Bruins. Including. Let's say five, final answer. All right. All right, we're calling Carrie back in from the cone of silence. Josh, how are you feeling? I'm feeling... um, I'm feeling a little bit better than Miles Michaelis is feeling yeah. right now. I, I put it <laughs> yeah. at maybe uh, 55% confidence. Feeling all right. Okay. Uh, all by right. the way, Paul Goldschmidt hit a solo home run in the top of the fourth, so it's now 5-1 to one Dodgers. Hey, we're five we're to cutting one Dodgers. into it. Yeah. I like yep. it. Mm-hmm. Uh, you never know. You never know. All right, Kerry. Kind of. Josh had Marsh spin the wheel. He was okay. hoping for hockey, and that's exactly what he got. Are you ready? No, but okay, let's go. Question number <laughs> one. With which team did Mark Stone begin his NHL career with? Options. Uh, New Jersey Devils, Montreal Canadiens, or Ottawa Senators? Let's go New Jersey Devils. Find the answer. Question number two, Jordan Cairo has two hat tricks this season. One against the Minnesota Wild, the other against which Eastern Conference team? The Rangers, final answer. Question number three, in the 2019 playoffs, Sammy Blay scored his first career playoff goal and only goal in the 2019 playoffs against which team? What year, 2019? Yes. <laughs> Hmm. Dallas Stars, final answer. Final question. Including the Boston Bruins, who, I'm sorry, yeah, including the Boston Bruins, who he has yet to play a game with, how many teams has Pat Maroon been on in his NHL career? Oh, man. I need no options here because I don't know. It's going to be three, two, three, four. Including including the Boston Bruins. Four, final answer. All right. Let's go over these. Question one. With which team did Mark Stone begin his NHL career with? <laughs> Carrie, you took the options. You went with the Devils. Josh, you went with the Senators. Correct answer is 
It is the Ottawa Senators. And Josh did not use the option, so he has a 2 nothing lead over Kerry. Not great. Jordan Cairo has two hat tricks this season, one against the Minnesota Wilds, the other against which Eastern Conference team? Josh, with the options, you said the Islanders. Kerry, I mean, immediately, you said the Rangers without any hesitation at I all. I could be wrong. Correct answer is... You could also be right. It is the New York Rangers. Uh, how'd you know that? I just, I didn't, when you, you said Islanders, it? but I thought it was the Rangers, but when you just said Islanders, I was like, oh, maybe it was the Islanders. Nice but job. Sure it was the Rangers. Okay. So Kerry ties it up with that. We got a 2 2 tie. In the 2019 playoffs, Sammy Blay scored his first career playoff goal and only goal in the 2019 playoffs against which team? Josh, you said the Dallas Stars. Kerry, you said the Dallas Stars. Correct answer is. Well, he took a slap shot on a breakaway against the Dallas Stars. Nice that is the job, correct answer. Guys, Kerry, you were kind of, you almost asked for the options, and I was in my head, I'm yeah. like, don't ask for the hey. options. And then you just, Dallas Stars, nailed it. Nice job. Neither of you <clears throat> used the options, so we have a 4-4 right. four, four tie. Final question. <sighs> Including the Boston Bruins who he has yet to play a game with. How many teams has Pat Maroon, pride of Oakville, been on in his NHL career? Neither of you use the options. <laughs> Kerry, you said four teams. Josh, you said five teams. <clears throat> if it's five, Josh wins. If it's four, Kerry wins. If it's literally any other number, we got to walk off. So, Marsh. Walk it off. How many teams? Oh, no. Seven. Seven's the number. <laughs> He's been with Anaheim, Edmonton, oh. the Devils, your St. Louis Blues, the Lightning, of course, which you won those other cup, cups with. The Wilds, who we signed with this year, and then traded to Boston at the deadline this year. Seven's the number. <laughs> so this is how it's going to work. Carrie, you're going to write down your answer. Oh, man. Josh, you're going to hold off on yours until we go to you. And when we go to you, it's go time. All right? Yeah. Closest yeah. to the pin wins. Carrie, you ready with a pen and paper there? I'm ready. All right, here we go. Mike Bossy holds the record for most goals scored in a single season in New York Islanders history. How many goals did Bossy score in that record-setting season? All right, we have Carrie's number. Josh, what's yours? I'm going to go 65. <laughs> Carrie, you wrote down? 68. 68. Mm. Oh, boy. Josh? You have chosen poorly. You lose. <laughs> Carrie wrote down 68. Josh, you said 65. Both very close. Now, Marsh, I used to go with a certain answer you on did. every tiebreaker, and mm -hmm. Jamie would scold me for it. Mm -hmm. How many goals did Mike Bossy score in that, that, that season? Well, Anthony, he scored 69. He scored 69 <laughs> goals. <laughs> Carrie is the winner today. Josh, hell of an effort, man. Oh. Nice job. You were close. Uh, Carrie just uh, nipped you there. Oh, that was, that was great. Thanks hey, for having job, me on, guys. Thanks, Josh. We appreciate you. Thank you. Yeah. All, All right. Have a good day. You too. Thank you. Nice job, Kerry. Oh, hockey scares Ooh. me. I needed him. Man. Seven teams. Wasn't close. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Kerry goes, ah, you're going to give me three or four. <laughs> the options were five, six, or seven, by the way. Uh, Would you say? You probably still would have went I would have five. Yeah. yeah. All right. Nice job there, Kerry. We got to get to Chris Carberry. He's the voice of the Blues. He's going to join us next here on 101 ESPN.
The choice of a lawyer is an important decision and should not be based solely on advertisements. If you've been hurt on the job, you don't need the biggest law firm. You need the best. Underlaw, voted 2023's best law firm in St. Louis, is the insurance company playing games, trying to deny the medical treatment you need, refusing to pay your lost wages. Let Underlaw fight for the benefits you deserve. Injured on the job? Call Underlaw for free. 314 or 618 9 million. That's 314 or 618 9 all zeros. Hey, you know what? There's no better way to know what kind of company you're bringing into your home than simple word of mouth and reviews. And if you go to classicaircare.com, you can read some of the many reviews that are out there with the service you get. How about this one? Vince, the technician, was very polite and timely. Took his time to answer any and all questions we had. Also made sure we completely understood the service he provided. That's from Christopher. Or how about this one? We were out of town and came home to an AC that wasn't blowing. Christian got here within four hours of my initial contact and got us back up and cooling over 4th of July weekend. He found some other issues but got my unit running so we could get together through the holiday and make a plan. That's who you're bringing into your home to work on your air conditioner, your furnace, and you go to Classic Air Care. You can book an appointment online at ClassicAirCare.com. You can call them. They'll come in. They'll give you a quote, whatever you may need. Whether it's maintenance, repair, service, go to Classic Air Care. Again, you can find them online at ClassicAirCare.com. They've been making people comfortable since 1926. Side with the voice of the blues, Chris Kerber, brought to you by Scott Lee Heating Company, a proud Mitsubishi Electric Elite contractor. Right here tonight, we got the pregame for the Blues and Flames starting at 6 o'clock, and then you'll hear the voice of the Blues take over. Chris Kerber, who joins us right now via the 101 ESPN Celebrity Line. Kerbs, how you doing today? Fellas, I'm good. It's opening day, one of my favorite days of the year. Then we get Blues hockey. Doesn't get much better. Yeah, you got a, you got a lot of action right now going on in sports. Of course, uh, like you said, opening day, you get the Blues tonight and the uh, Sweet 16 going on in the NCAA. So, yeah, a lot of good stuff. Uh, Curbs, unfortunate break with Oscar Sunquist. Uh, tears his ACL again. Tough break for him. Fortunately, he'd already signed the contract from a personal standpoint. But what do the Blues lose with Oscar Sunquist not being in the lineup tonight? You know, I thought, and I can't remember which player it was after the game, or maybe it was yesterday. I, I don't remember which player said it, but uh, – you use the phrase, you know, he, he's, he's the head of our engine. And you remember Craig Berube used to describe him as the head of the snake for, for this team. Uh, you know what you're getting. He's a, he, even today walking out of there, you know, I saw him this morning and, you know, he's smiling, he's frustrated, he's disappointed. He, I had talked to him a few weeks ago about, you know, the fact that he just feels good. He hadn't been this healthy in a while. And so the devastating injury that's going to have him rehabbing through the off season and, you know, that, that's a shame for him. But, again, his attitude's positive. He was smiling, um, you know, around his team. And, and that's that's what you're going to miss. And none of that offense was a little hit and miss, and especially down the stretch, a little more miss than hit. But uh, but definite hard work. And, and so, you know, on a personal level, he's such a, a nice man, such a friendly uh, character that, 
I, I, I was, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm extremely happy for him that that extension got done a couple of weeks ago before this happened. Curves with that injury, obviously he's down, but you get a couple of younger guys who are going to get an opportunity in, in Bull Duke and Dean. What have you seen from them in their first few games uh, as young players in this league? Uh, yeah, I, don't, I don't know. Uh, it, it's going to take a while to really understand what they do. Like, yeah, you know, on, honestly, Kerry, if you're if you're looking at Bull Duke and Dean as bottom six players for your team, then I don't think you're getting from them what you thought you were getting from them when you drafted the one and traded for the other. But it's way too early to understand how that can pan out. I don't think either one of them, is they had solid seasons when they were playing down in Springfield, and then they were so focused on teaching both these guys just how to be a pro uh, that, uh, you know, again, when I talked to Tim Taylor and other people in the organization, it wasn't an overly abundance of concern when it comes to the lack of offense from both of them. Having said that, there was still a lack of offense from them on a regular basis down there. So what type of players are going to project to be that, that who I don't know, but the one thing that I'm waiting to see, you know, and Jake neighbors, for example, did, has done it this year, take taking that step, uh, you know, but much like you know, you're going to see with the Cardinals and Victor Scott, if he can do it or whatever Mason Wynn does that, you know, you know, the, the bottom line is opportunity is there. And are you the kind of player that's going to take advantage of it? You know, are you going to Wally pip somebody, uh, you know, and, and that's something I'd like to see. I, I want to see one of these young guys come in, you know, go on one of those tears that, that, that makes somebody go, okay, we've got to put them up the lineup. You know, and 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 I, I love the Wally Pip reference just because you know you never know when an opportunity opens up. Do you take advantage of it? And these guys have that opportunity now, and the games still matter. I mean, this is great evaluation time for Doug Armstrong because these games still matter a great deal. You've got Vegas playing tonight at Winnipeg, oh, and, and Drew Bannister put it best. He goes, six can quickly become four, and then you see what happens on Saturday night. So. Um, this is still a great evaluation opportunity for Doug Armstrong when it comes to those young guys. Curtis, what else are you looking for down the stretch here? You just talked about the young guys, and there's a lot of focus there. But, you know, what, what about the rest of the team? <laughs> yeah, it's a, that's an interesting question. I don't know. I, I think the rest of the team is what you've seen, mm -hmm. right? And I don't know if that's a downer for some, but, I, like, I, I just don't think with 10 games to go, we're going to see Jordan Cairo all of a sudden, you know, start putting that puck in every single shift the way, you know, depending on the time it is and stop turning it over at the lines. I, you know, I, I don't, I don't think we're going to see, you know, all of a sudden a, a cleaner game from which Navis like we have seen before. Although I am happier that uh, we're going to see him back on the wing and I'm excited to see what Jake neighbors does with those two guys tonight. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, I think the, the the makeup of this team, Anthony, is what it is. Sure. So what I'm looking for is honestly, you've got a favorable schedule, and you've proven you can skate with the best team. So they could beat Edmonton when Edmonton comes into town. They've proven that they can hang with Colorado, and they're going to have to get points in those games. So I, honestly, for me, I guess it comes down to one thing. I'm just looking for compete, compete, and 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 and, and play like it matters, and 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 see where the chips fall. I think I think the team is pretty much where Doug Armstrong expected it to be. I, I don't think it's a surprise to anybody, um, you know. But when you do look at the missed opportunities, I think there's going to be the feeling one you're missing up an, an opportunity when you get great goaltending all season long. But some of those other games you've missed opportunities as well. So I guess strong compete is has got to be the name of the game if you're going to get a chance. Curves, you talked about Bush Navis going back to the wing and neighbors going up to that top line. Is this the best setup for Robert Thomas to have the most success he can have with those two on his wings? Robert Thomas is a it's it's an it's an interesting year because you know one of the things you look for, Gary, and I'm I'm sure you you played with plenty of guys like this. There are guys that are really really good in what they do, but they're not necessarily guys that make other people around them better. If that makes sense. Then there are guys that are really good at what they do and make others around them better. And I'm, I think you're starting to see that Robert Thomas is one of those guys that can make whoever he plays with better. He's, he's had success with Jordan Cairo on his wing and, and, and Butch Navich. He's had success with Shen on his wing. He's had success when I with neighbors as well. So I, I like the fact that Robert is moving into that category. What I like, about Jake Neighbors on this line is Robert and 
Pavel have been really good with their puck battles and winning the puck along the boards. When they look up, they're going to see number 63 in front of the net. And that's going to give them opportunities. One, it's going to open up some ice because somebody's got to cover Jake. The other thing it's going to do is uh, if they throw the puck at the net, there's points there because Jake's going to find a way to bang it in. That, to me, is a different dynamic. Uh, with Kyra on that line, there, there wasn't the net front presence you know, that was there as much. And so I'm, that's what I'm kind of curious to see how that plays out and if they take advantage of that. Chris Kerber joins us right now on the fast lane on 101 ESPN. I don't want to get too far ahead with the offseason stuff because, you know, we will at some point, and hopefully it's delayed, Kerbs, but we will at some point dive into the offseason. <laughs> um, but when, it, when you're when you're looking at just this group, you're looking, you know, you, you, I know that nobody wants – that we. I, I certainly don't. I don't want Doug Armstrong's job. I know you don't either because it's very difficult. But when you're kind of assessing things from his – his viewpoint here with contracts and whatnot, where do you think the area of focus could be following the season? I, well, there, that's a, yeah, that, that, I think, I think what you've seen from this team is there, there needs to be a shift in something defensively, whether that be with the core itself um, or, you know, even just how the team looks at it. Uh, again, the first 10, 10, 15 games of the year, things are looking really good. And then it hasn't like too many teams, I think, have been able to play in the Blues offensive zone almost as if they're on a five on five power play. So whether it be systematically or personnel, something's got to give there. This is a team that has still given up uh, the most backdoor scoring opportunities and just about any team in the league. And that's a trend of three straight years now. So I, I think without a doubt, the continued focus defensively on this team. And how they're going to defend in their own zone has got to be a focus. The other part of it is rounding out how you distribute your money up front. You know, you, it, obviously, Snuggerud looks like a player that's going to be turning pro, and I believe he's in, and so do others. He's a straight to NHL kind of player. Don't know the scenario with Dvorsky. We don't know the scenario yet. And uh, you listen to Doug, maybe a couple years away on the two young Swedish kids that they drafted in the first round. We'll see how that all plays out. But there also has to be like a distribution. I, I, you're going to see some free agents go uh, that that didn't pan out this year. And, you know, to me, there's, there's still going to be a hole maybe in your top six, but boy, oh boy, if you can find a way to round out that third line with more consistent offense, Anthony, mm-hmm. that that's, that's going to be huge. I mean, you've got, you've got guys that have got, you know, way, way too inconsistent offense for your third line. And you've got to have a third line with threat in today's national hockey league. So, I guess the bottom line is there's plenty of room for focus, but if if you look at the way the season goes and you think, holy smokes, you beat a stinky San Jose team in San Jose, and, and you beat Colorado Columbus on that road trip in early December when they were awful, uh, you're right in a playoff spot. Sure. So I think Doug also has to look at it and say, look, I, I know we're not Stanley Cup contenders, but he's got the core here that definitely is a playoff caliber team, and he can put it over the bump to get them back in. Well said. All right, Curbs, we'll uh, we'll let you go. We know you got work to do tonight. We'll be listening right here on 101 ESPN as the Blues take on the Flames. All right, guys, have an awesome rest of the week. You too. You thanks, too. Curbs. That's Chris Kerber, voice of the Blues here on 101 ESPN as the uh, Blues, again, they take on the Flames pregame right after our show starting at 6 o'clock. And the puck will drop right around 7, 7.05. As the Flames and Blues get it on and the Blues clinging on to uh, their playoff hopes right now. March Madness. Sweet 16 tonight. Going to do a little quick hitter here. We're going to talk about top seed, you know, the top seed that could fall in all the Sweet 16, not not necessarily just tonight. But uh, Marsh has got a couple of different angles for tonight. One Number one seed most likely to miss uh, the Elite Eight or get bounced. Most overrated team left in the tournament. Most underrated team. We'll do that next here in the Fastlane on 101 ESPN.
At r and Tire Express, it has never been easier to get the tires that you need and the wheels that you want. Now through April 15th, request a quick quote, and r and will pay half your first month's payment. That's half throughout the month of April. And when r and says quick quote, they do mean quick. We're talking about 60 seconds top to get a quote. Simply submit your contact info, vehicle year, make, and model. That's it. That's all you have to do. You do that at r and tires.com. And then you secure your half-off offer today. And don't worry, requesting a quote is a no-commitment inquiry. So you just do it there and you can get your quote. It's not a commitment that is attached to that, not at R&R Tire Express. They offer flexible payment options. Everyone's approved, no credit needed. Plus, you'll enjoy peace of mind coverage that includes free tire installation, free rotations, free flat repair, and more. You're not going to beat this deal. You're not going to beat it anywhere. So if you need new tires, need new wheels, let the R&R Tire Express team pay half your first month on all in-stock tires and wheels when you request a quick quote at rnrtires.com or when you call one 833 Three roll now. It's rnrtires.com. One oh one ESPN Sports Center. 
I'm Andrew Marsh. It's time for a Sports Center update. Driven by Johnny Londoff Chevrolet and Johnny Londoff Autoplex. The Dodgers currently lead your St. Louis Cardinals by a score of 5-1 to one in the top of the sixth inning. Miles Michaelis, the starter today for the Cardinals, went four and a third, gave up seven hits, five earned runs. He walked two, struck out five, and then gave up two home runs in his first start of the season. Once again, the Cardinals trail 5-1 to one in the top of the sixth inning inning. The Blues take on the Calgary Flames tonight. Pre-game starts at 6 o'clock. Puck drop is at 7 and you can catch all of the action right here on 101 ESPN. We just got done talking with Chris Kerber, voice of the Blues right here on the Blues Radio Network. If you missed that interview, make sure you go to 101ESPN.com or use the free 101 mobile app. Just head to the podcast page. You'll find all of our interviews and full shows there and it's all brought to you by Dobbs Tire and Auto Centers. We're going to dive into some March Madness as the Sweet 16 gets underway tonight. That's coming your way next right here in the Fast Lane. I'm Andrew Marsh, and this Sports Center update is driven by Johnny Londoff. Find your roads and shop 24 7 at Londoff.com and LondoffAutoplex.com. Are you kidding me? Sixteen, We got the pregame tomorrow night because, of course, we got the Blues tonight. But we got uh, some pregame starting at 6 o'clock tomorrow night ahead of those matchups. So tonight you've got Clemson, Arizona, San Diego State, UConn, Alabama, North Carolina, Illinois. Hi, hello. Versus Iowa State. Boo. Tomorrow night, NC State, Marquette, Gonzaga, Purdue, Duke, Houston, Creighton, Tennessee. I mentioned this earlier in the week. I love every single matchup. Every matchup is intriguing for one reason or another, whether it's, whether it's a couple of heavyweights, you got a blue, you know, you got some blue blood matchups. You got last year's national, uh, re, you know, a revenge spot for San Diego State tonight against UConn. But, Marsh, you got some quick hitter questions that I love. Go for it. Yes. Yes, let's start off. <laughs> Sorry, I was just like really Kelsey, into this Michael. like <laughs> Ed music, like basketball like, music. Yeah, like you know, it, the it's almost got like shoes. the squeak shoes. Yeah, it reminds me of uh, the squeaky shoes, and then all of a sudden you hear, "We're playing basketball." <laughs> I love that song. Anyways, all right, let's start off with uh, question number one. Number one seed most likely to be bounced. So your <sighs> one seeds are UConn. North Carolina, they play tonight. Tomorrow night, Purdue and Houston. I've got two that I feel very confident I think about. I know one of them. You know one of them. One of them is not. It's Perdon. It's Perdon. Yep. I'm going to go with you. Right. I'm with you on that one. You're, you're playing against Perdon. Gonzaga. Yep. I think Purdue is probably, again, they're they, good, man. they are really good. They are, but they're but always good. They, they That would be the one team. And I know you don't agree with this, but... And, and it may be a bit of a homer pick, but I'm going to go UConn. No way. Yeah. UConn will not lose tonight. I do not be surprised if they have their hands full. Again, hey. a matchup, a rematch from last year's championship game. I think that it, those are the types of games. You know how long San Diego State been chewing on that and sitting around thinking mm-hmm. about that and to have the opportunity when the bracket came out? Like, oh, Hell yes. <laughs> that's what they said. I wasn't there, but I know that's what they said. <laughs> oh, hell yes. <laughs> Just what I've been waiting on. Yeah. And so don't be surprised if that's a much closer game, kind of down to the last last couple of minutes, last couple of seconds, and San Diego State may, have, may be able to pull it out. I, you know, it's funny. I look at that same match, but I had the same thought process, Carrie. I wasn't there either, but UConn said, oh, hell yes. <laughs> Newton Spencer. <laughs> Clinging. I mean, they all looked at it. Oh, yeah. So we got San Diego State. They win by UConn wins by 10 plus tonight. All right. Perdon is the team that I think gets bounced first. I would not be shocked at all if Houston got bounced. I was gonna, that's the other one. Houston. They, they played poorly down the yep. stretch. They, they got in a foul. They got a massive foul trouble. They gained 45 free throws. Barely hung on. Texas A&M. Duke looks like Duke again mm-hmm. after, after getting bounced early in the ACC tournament. So I would rank them Perdon. Houston, North, North Carolina, Carolina, but I don't see it happening. Yeah. 
and then UConn. UConn, you don't see that happening. No. Okay. So you mentioned that uh, that Houston game, and or just Houston in general, uh, that might play into this next question. Who is the most overrated team left in the tournament? I'm not going to go with Perdon because I do think that they're really good. I don't like the matchup against Gonzaga and Mark Few. That team's well coached. They're experienced. And Purdue just has a hard time getting over the hump. I, but I'm not, I don't think that they're overrated. It's two different things. I do have one team specifically, and it's a four seed. It's Alabama. Oh. Alabama is overrated. But they're, they play, but they, they are, do, they don't play defense. Uh, they, they got Grand Canyon, and Grand Canyon gave it, you know, they, they, they pushed them to the limit after not shooting well. Tonight's going to be rough for, for Alabama, I think. Tonight is where they get bounced. I, I had them actually. I don't know if I had them losing in the first round, and it may, I, I no, because they played Charleston. I had them going out in one of these two rounds. I think they're the the most overrated team left. What about Tennessee? To, to Tennessee, uh, not a I'm great not showing. A yeah, not a great not showing a in the SEC title game, no. but and I'm not a fan of SEC basketball. Just me personally. All right, well, we got the SEC covered then. I got Alabama. You got Tennessee. Very. <laughs> so we got it covered. What about you, Marsh? Overrated. I like the Alabama pick. Okay. I didn't think they looked that good. No. Plus, they're a football school. They don't need yeah, to be they, in this tournament. Just, I'm good. Yeah. I'm good. I don't need them con- continuing to win all these sports. And R.J. Davis, R- look, for me, like, R.J. D- RJ Davis is fun to watch for North mm-hmm. Carolina. I don't see them getting past the next round. Like, I see them winning tonight against Bama, but then. Yeah, I got I Arizona don't... making it out of the, uh, so was that the West. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Also, like, what do you think about Clemson? No, they're a six seed. I, I just, I don't know. I, I don't, don't think about them. them. So I, I use the, ter- <laughs> I use the term plucky to describe some team earlier yeah. today. I think that they're, they're plucky. Like I mean, they, they did. They needed. Uh, I forgot who it was, but they were in a situation where Baylor had a chance to tie the game with mm-hmm. two free throws. The guy missed both of them. Yep. Got to hit your free throws. Yep. But I think if Baylor hits those free throws, yes, the game's tied. Baylor wins that game. A lot of people loved Baylor in that matchup. Uh, I think I think the 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 end is here for Clemson, mm-hmm. but Chase Hunter's had a really nice tournament for them. So, but I don't think they're overrated. Mm-hmm. They're, I think they're properly rated. Right with that. All right, let's go to the most underrated team left in the tournament. Oh, my Illini, where, where, where's the love? <laughs> what are we doing? Terrence Shannon is the best player in the tournament. I keep telling you all this. The game against Moorhead State, they were it, they were they were you know they were stinking. They weren't playing well. There was a play where there was a loose ball. Two Moorhead State players run into the ball. You know who got on the ground to go get the ball? Who? The best player in the tournament, Terrence Shannon, and you could see the game shift. Basketball coaches always talk about getting on the floor first. If your best player is willing to do that, you're probably going to win that game. And he did, and they did. And to me, Terrence Shannon, you got to watch this kid, man. He's, this, he's he been is, incredible. He is, and and it, it reminds me, and, and I, I haven't wanted to say this, but what Kimball Walker did in the Big East tournament years ago, mm-hmm. running through it, winning the Big East tournament, and then taking that UConn team and winning the NCAA tournament, that's what I feel about Terrence Shannon. What they were able to do to win the Big Ten tournament and how I feel that they are going to be able to run through and put themselves in the championship game and potentially win it. Okay. That's what I see. And I don't think anyone talks enough about Illinois. Not just because I'm a homer. It's definitely because I'm a homer. But <laughs> <laughs> they definitely need to be talked about more. <laughs> um, outside of NC State, can, can you really say anybody is underrated? Cause we're talking about top seeds here. Right. We're talking yeah. about twos and threes. If I had to choose one, and again, I don't think they're underrated because they've 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 reemerged here as Gonzaga. Yeah. yeah, you know they're they're underrated coming into the tournament, but now they they woke everybody up again. Like, oh God, that's right, Gonzaga's awesome at this time of year. So. The way that they ran through Kansas, uh, a lot of a lot of people kind of had, and I had McNeese State in that 12-5 <laughs> matchup. I thought McNeese State would give him a game. Marsh, you faded me on that, and well done because that that was you ugly. Had, you had McNeese M- McNeese State plus seven. Oh, uh, yeah, and they lost by like 30, 57, 20, I think. Thirty-seven. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Yep. That would be funny, though, if Gonzaga made a run when, I mean, nobody they saw weren't him. supposed to yeah. really 21. be in the tournament, were they? They were, but they lost to St. Mary's in the right. West Coast I'm talking about before tournament. the season started. This was one they of their... Were, yeah, they were like 20th, yeah. 21st. I can't remember what the exact rank it was. No, but you're right. It wasn't like that typical Gonzaga right. uh, team. But so I, I would say they're... they're 
as underrated mm-hmm. of a team heading into the Sweet 16 as you have. You can have. All right, let's do one more here. Anthony, you said you like all the matchups mm-hmm. this weekend. Uh, what is the most intriguing matchup to you guys? For this, for Sweet 16. Just the Sweet 16. I'll say Duke um, Houston. You think? Yeah, because H- Houston being a one seed, but a vulnerable yeah. one seed. Duke being a four seed that was a vulnerable four seed coming into the tournament. So which which version of Houston are we getting and which version of Duke, of Duke are we getting? Are we going to get the version of Duke that ran through the first two? <laughs> Every <laughs> day. Hands. Every day. Well, I got the Italian <laughs> hands going on. We speak with our hands. Um, I bumped my mic for those that are not watching the snake pit. Duke, are we going to get the version that won the first two games running away or are we going to get the version of Duke that played in the ACC tournament game? So that's gonna, been the most intriguing. I'm gonna go Purdue and uh, Gonzaga. Okay. Uh, because again, Purdue is, your is long answer. And <laughs> probably not. But Purdue is the team that you look at year after year, and you're saying, okay, all right, come on, are you going to be able to do it? And here they are, number one seed, opportunity to make it to the Elite Eight and potentially make it to the Final Four. Mm-hmm. And Zach you got Eadie one of the best play, players yeah. in the country, a seven nine eight five center that is out right he just out you say seven nine eight five he's eight five like he's he's the largest <laughs> human being i've seen in a while he is huge and so he just does a great job of of you know they play in a different style than everyone else and and they don't let you speed them up i like i like that matchup but i think they are the most vulnerable team the number one team mm-hmm. would you be so maybe that is the most intriguing matchup because real quick if i were to say to you per don't falls Tonight. I be surprised. Okay. Or tomorrow night. Excuse me. If I were to say to you, Purdue rolls. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. So maybe that I'd is the like, most I wouldn't be surprised. I, either way. Mm-hmm. Because I don't know. Yep. But you got a mammoth of a human being in the middle of the, the court, like the, right by the basket. He's, 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 he's a large person. He, 7985. 7985. <laughs> <laughs> That's Kerry Davis from Anthony Stalter again. So tomorrow night, we'll have Sweet 16 coverage for you. Following us here in the fast lane tonight, Blues, Flames, pregame starting at 6 o'clock. We're going to give you an update on the Cardinals, things that have gone wrong, things that have gone right, more in the former category. Uh, We'll talk about it next on 101 ESPN.
Well, unfortunately, the opening day uh, trip to L.A. What? They're still playing. Not going well. They're still playing. They got time. Top of the seventh, the Cardinals are trailing the Dodgers 6-1. to one. Okay. The story, unfortunately, was the performance of Miles Michaelis, who goes four and a third, allows seven hits, five runs, walked two, struck out five through 74 pitches, which is probably right around the mark that he was supposed to throw. Like most starters... They're probably about 75. The problem is his 75 only went for four and a third. Well, and, and things things to carry went sideways right from the jump. Yeah. I mean, your first four batters, you didn't get any of them out. That like that was kind of the catalyst. And then at least not on your own. You know, no, no, Shohei, no, no. Shohei, o- oh, Shohei. The, yeah, yeah. Shohei overran the base. They all got on base. Um, yeah, it was it was wasn't a great performance. Mm-mm. Game is still going on, obviously, but this is. This was the fear of Cardinal Nation Mm -hmm. because Miles Michaelis, I think that that becomes the, that has been the expectation of what we thought this Cardinal staff would be. And even he had, he said something yesterday about people that are, are, don't believe in them or don't trust them. And then you go out and you have that type of performance. All you're doing is leading more people to not believe. And so now your next, next night out. Uh, who's next? Is it Gibson or is it Lynn? It's Thompson tomorrow. Is it Zach Thompson tomorrow? Mm-hmm. Oh, it's okay. supposed to be. Well, maybe he can uh, get it going in the right direction. Yeah. Because today was uh, was not a good performance. No, not at all. And if you're looking at, you know, I, I'm not going to sit here and bore everybody with the advanced metrics, okay? But but this this paints the picture here. Shohei Otani, Gavin Lux. Actually, I'm sorry. These are the uh, early on. Mookie Betts at a home run, 104 miles per hour. Freddie Freeman's home run was hit 101. I thought the Freeman home run was faster just off the TV. It looked faster, but apparently Betts was faster or harder, hit harder, I should say. Um, James, uh, uh, let's see here. Will Smith had a single that got through a, a drawn-in infield that was almost 100 miles per hour. He allowed a bunch of hard contact, he being Miles Michaelis. Mm-hmm. This is somebody that is not a high strikeout pitcher. You have, if you're Michaelis... When he's at his best, he's keeping the ball in the yard, and he's not walking everybody. He's soft contact if if he is allowing anything. And again, keeping the ball in the yard. Instead, he allowed two ding-dong Johnsons and walked two. And a slew of hard contact. And this was the one pitcher. I don't know if you said it, Marsh, or you said it, Kerry. I think you did, Marsh, in one of the breaks. This is only one of two pitchers that pitch well in spring training for you. Mm. Zach Thompson was the other. Sonny Gray is hurt. Your prize free agent possession is hurt. And the rest of these guys, Lance Lynn, Kyle Gibson, and Steven Matz, had rough springs. Now, there are other pitchers around Major League Baseball who had horrible springs that are pitching well today. So it doesn't spring training isn't isn't ever isn't the all end all be all, but just from a confidence standpoint, Kerry, coming off a bad year. You were hoping that Miles Michaelis would pitch well today. Instead, he didn't, and they trailed by five. But we'll keep you updated and, on and, that. And they trailed by two in the first inning. And that's kind of what we've talked about. Now, the Cardinals batted first, and they didn't get any. But normally, you know, before the batters even get an opportunity to get in the batter's box, you're down. You're down. And this has kind of been a reoccurring thing. That's what last season was. Mm-hmm. Hopefully this is not. You know, hopefully this is just one game. And tomorrow will be a better day. But... That, that's not – it's not great so far. No, it's not. All right. We're going to talk a little Battlehawks football. They open up the season on Saturday against Michigan, the Michigan Panthers at Ford Fields, and we're going to talk to Wayne Gallman. Wayne Gallman, running back. I'm sure you heard the name. If you're, if you're an NFL fan, you're a Clemson fan. He played at Clemson, had some had a stint in the NFL as well. Wayne Gallman of the Battlehawks next on 101 ESPN.
Say goodbye to busted brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the tourney, whether you're betting on a big upset or a one seed. It's time to go dancing on America's number one sports book because right now, Anthony, new customers get $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. Gary, we got the Sweet 16 tonight. Yes. You got four matchups tonight. You got another four tomorrow night. I'm, su- I'm assuming you like your uh, Illinois fight. You know Illini. I like the Illini. They're I a, love the Illini. They're a small dog, one plus one and a half. But what do they know? You're going to throw away the one and a half. Yeah, just give give, uh, give us Illinois on the money line. Mm-hmm. Uh, when it comes to the Sweet 16, though, you can bet the other matchups if you'd like. When it comes to the fan, FanDuel, they've got all the wages for you. Money lines, point spreads, everything. you got to visit FanDuel, though. Just visit FanDuel.com slash fast. Again, FanDuel.com slash fast. Bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets. Must be 21 or older and present in Illinois. First online real money wager only. $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued is not drawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling prom call 1-800-GAMBLER. That's right, time to talk a little Battlehawks football as the Battlehawks get ready to take on the Michigan Panthers at Ford Field on Saturday afternoon with Kerry Davis, Super Bowl champion. I'm Anthony Stalter. 502, your time check brought to you by Clarkson Jewelers, an officially licensed Rolex jeweler. And we head to the 101 ESPN celebrity line. We're going to talk to Battlehawks running back Wayne Gallman. Wayne, thank you so much for joining us, especially during a busy time. Yeah, no problem, man. I appreciate y'all for having me. Hey, Wayne, we're going to talk football, man, but I got to ask you, you, get, you we were about an hour before tip-off. Clemson taking on Arizona <laughs> in the Sweet 16. You fired up? <laughs> Honestly, man, uh, I mean, I'm fired up. I hope they do well, but I haven't been able to pay much attention to uh, the basketball scene. Well, I'm sure you're, I'm sure you're busy. With with practice and everything, yeah. uh, when it when it comes to this year's Battlehawks team, what can fans what can fans look to see? Look forward to see. Uh, all I can say is they can look forward to seeing just a high scoring offense. Uh, you know, we have plenty of receivers that are so dynamic in what they bring, and then uh, in the backfield, you know, we're going to make it happen. 
uh, me, Jacob, Mateo, like we're going to do what we got to do to really, you know, give a spark to the offense. And uh, as well as the offensive line, man, we got some dogs up front. So, you know, on the offensive side, man, I, I think the fans can expect just a great season. Dwayne, as you all are approaching game day, how, how does it feel? Are you excited? Are you nervous? Worried? Are you are you just ready to get that first hit and get the game going? Yeah, I'd say I'm pretty calm, man. Um, you know, they're a good team from what we've seen on film. You know, we don't have much to watch but last year, but we know that, you know, they're pretty talented in what they have. And, and all I can say is that I know we're prepared. Um, I'm very calm in my approach, but I know once it comes game day, I'll definitely be ready to take a hit or give a <laughs> hit, whatever it is. Wayne, so, go. Yes, sir. Sorry, Wayne, go ahead. No, you're good. You're good. Uh, Wayne Goldman, running back for the Battlehawks, joining us right now on the fast lane on 101 ESPN. Wayne, we had an opportunity to talk to Anthony Beck last week, your head coach, and uh, we we love Coach Beck. Uh, what's it been like playing for him? He he seems like he's got all of your guys' best interest at heart. Yeah, he definitely does, and all he wants is to uh, really get the trust from the players, knowing that day in and day out that we're going to put in the work and give 100% effort on the field, practice field, in the meetings, whatever. You know, he just wants that effort. And, you know, man, we love and appreciate him for that, you know, from, you know, the little rest periods that we've had and uh, the high-intense practices. So, you know, we love Coach Bet. Now, when you all start your first game on the road in Michigan, but soon enough, next weekend, you'll be here in St. Louis. Have you learned much about how passionate the fans of St. Louis are for their Battle Hawks? Uh, I've learned a lot. Apparently, my cousin uh, has been watching the Battle Hawks for quite some time. And, you know, now that I'm playing, he's <laughs> that much more excited. So I've definitely got to uh, – I've heard some things, but, you know, it's always different uh, when you actually sit on game day. Uh, Wayne, going going back to your, your collegiate career, you, you guys won a national title at Clemson, and I, I was just I was looking at this Alabama roster that you guys beat. I mean, we're talking about uh, one that's absolutely loaded. Uh, do you still talk to some of your former Clemson teammates? You know, Mike Williams just signed a deal with the the Jets, and Christian Wilkins is moving in free agency as well. How close are you with your your Clemson teammates from that national title team in 2017? Uh, man, all I can say is that we're all family. Even when we see each other in the past, it's not like the day has gone by where, you know, we don't have something rekindled or we're doing something together. But, you know, I don't talk to those guys every day. Sure. But I know that everybody's doing well and, uh, you know, doing great in their careers too. And I can't, I can't really put a, you know, a word on that because – what, what more do you want for your brother? Mm -hmm. Sure. Now, when you had a uh, stellar career at Clemson, and I'm I, I, I'm a former player. I went to Illinois. I know uh, we think about our college times, and we hear about the NIL money that is being doled around now. How much money do you think you'd have been making at Clemson <laughs> if you had the opportunity to get the NIL bag? I, I don't think I could really put a number on it from what I'm saying these days because you really don't. I really don't even really understand it. I've heard, I've learned a little bit from some of the current players now, but I still don't understand it totally. You know, like I think I would have been making. That's a, that's a, I don't know, a big number probably. Can't put a number on it. Yep. Uh, Wayne, uh, we we know we know that you're you're busy. We know that uh, you're you're driving around right now, and you got practice and everything. That uh, you know travel time and everything. We're looking forward to watching you and your Battle Hawk teammates not only this weekend but throughout the season. And man, you got a lot of uh, excited fans here in St. Louis that can't wait to go out watch you guys on TV and then watch you guys in the home opener very soon. Man, I can't tell you how much I appreciate it, and you know we love the fans. You know, being able to tune in and. You know, I'll get the, a chance, my first chance to see how it is this next week. But, you know, we love the fans. We appreciate everyone for supporting. And just know that, you know, we're taking every game like it's our last. And we just want to make it to a championship at the end of the day. Well, it's awesome. We're looking forward to watching you for sure. Wayne, thanks for your time today. Yeah, no problem. I appreciate y'all having me. All right, take care.
Uh, Wayne Gallman, Thank running you. back for the – thank you. The Wayne Gallman, running back for the Battle Hawks. I, I remember him at, at uh, Clemson. That Clemson yeah. team was loaded. Uh, when you look at that, just just the Alabama-Clemson national title game, if you just go back to that one specifically, you got on Clemson's side Deshaun Watson, Wayne Gallman was the starting running back, Hunter Renfro, Mike Williams. That was all offensively. You flip the defense. Christian Wilkins just signed a massive deal with the Raiders. Carlos Watkins, Dexter Lawrence, Farrell, who was a first-rounder for the Raiders, O'Daniel, and Tankersley. <clears throat> that... Those were those were all players that were drafted by the NFL. You go to Alabama in that national title game. You had Jalen Hurts, Bo Scarborough, O.J. Howard, Bradley Bozeman, Cam Robinson, Calvin Ridley, Jonathan Al- Allen, Deron Payne, Ryan Anderson, Rashawn Evans, Reuben Foster, Marlon Humphrey, Minka Fitzpatrick, Ronnie Harrison. A lot of guys. Holy smokes. <laughs> and that was the the 35-31 win for Clemson, where Clemson scored 21 in the in the fourth quarter when Deshaun Watson put on a show. He did put on a show. That was a title, man. That was a great game. That was a great team that they had. And I remember just when he was playing for the for the Giants. Mm-hmm. I, I remember him being in the NFL. I think it's, a, it's really good when, you know, some of these teams have players that are recognizable, that people have heard of, that they know, that they were able to watch, whether it was in college or in the professional ranks. And I'm excited to see this Battlehawks team play this year because I know, you know, they they didn't get the ending that they wanted last year. But I I think the mindset, and you kind of heard that from them, we want to win a championship. (laughs) Our goal, our mindset, play every game like it's our last because you don't know when it could be your last and go out there and take care of your business. So, Kerry, I I got two two points on that. You had mentioned, you know, when you're you're looking at these rosters, the UFL rosters. Now, Battlehawks fans are going to recognize a lot lot of the names that were here a year year ago, of course. You got A.J. McCarron, and everybody followed A.J. McCarron's career in college if you're a college football fan. But Darius Shepard is back. Uh, You've got, I mean, the, the wide receivers alone, you're, you're gonna you're gonna recognize a lot of these names, but the one name that really stood out to me is Wayne Goldman, mm-hmm. because I, again I remember watching him at Clemson mostly, and then of course followed his career a little bit with the Giants, and then he bounced around the NFL. Akeem Butler was the other wide receiver I was thinking right. of. But the second point I was gonna say on that is. <laughs> Do you know the moment I knew that Wayne Gallman was absolutely locked in on the Battle Hawk season? When I asked him about his Clemson Tigers playing in the Sweet 16, he goes, Yeah, I haven't been able to follow. I haven't been able to pay attention. My man is locked in I got to the work Battle to Hawk do. season. I love it. <laughs> I love it. All right, it's Fast Lane on 101 ESPN. By the way, we've got a Battle Hawks guest every Thursday here in the Fast Lane. Exclusive Battle Hawks guest every Thursday here in the Fast Lane. Wayne Gallman was just the start of it. Uh, hopefully, we get a chance to talk to maybe uh, AJ McCarron at some point. That'd be great. Love what love talking to Coach Beck a couple weeks ago mm-hmm. at the Battle Hawks Town Hall events for three the three one four day. Uh, we were all ready to suit up for him that night. So looking forward to more Battle Hawks coverage for you right here on one one ESPN. We got our sports six pack next three one four three nine nine ninety six forty six to the Air Comfort Service text line. So if you got a question for Carrie and I, send it in. Sports six pack next.
It's time for the Fast Lane to answer your sports questions. I want to ask you a bunch of questions. I want to have them answered immediately. You're asking me all these weird questions. Answer the question. Answer the question. Answer me! The Sports Six Pack is now. Time for the Sports Six Pack here in the Fast Lane on 101 ESPN with Kerry Davis. I'm Anthony Stalter. Here's Andrew Marsh with your questions via the Air Comfort Service text line at 314 399 9646. Question number one. All right, from the 314, guys, a tough day for Miles Michaelis, but what else has stood out to you on opening day? Victor Scott. Oh, yeah. Victor Scott has stood out that to That is me. speed. He needs to be leading off. Uh, I'm just going to go there. He needs to be in the lineup. He needs to lead off. Not that he wouldn't be. That was a dumb statement. Well, he needs to lead off. It's fine. You get him on base, and you got Goldie, you got Nolan Gorman, you got Arenado. If you get him on base and Mason Wynn is behind him, Brendan Donovan, who maybe has a better day than he's having today. Mm -hmm. But I would much rather him be in front of Paul Goldschmidt. I I, I don't care. He, He, the speed I just saw from him still in that base, and Glass now knew he was going. Uh, he, he, all the, right, he threw he, over he once. He knew. He, Scott like, was leaning. He's, he turned his foot towards, i tell you something, when we used to train, and, and, and one of the things you want to do is make sure when you're doing that three-cone drill or mm-hmm. that 5-10-5, that, that five, five, get your feet pointed in the direction you're going. Mm. He turned his left foot, and his left foot was pointing at second base. I'm out of here. I'm going. It's nobody here going to stop me. Yeah. That was beautiful. That was. I need to see more. So Victor Scott, if you didn't see it, Victor Scott got on via throwing error by Mookie Betts. But that was, you could say, ah, it was an error. And it was. But Betts had to rush his throw. The, the inf- By the way, Freeman and Muncie were pulled in. Right? Mun- is Muncie playing third? For, I know Freeman. Obviously, Freeman's playing yeah. first. I think Muncie's playing third. They were, they were both drawn in. So they're already waiting for Victor Scott to lay down a bunt. So you're, you now have an, uh, an infield that's drawn in. He slaps one to shortstop where Mookie Betts is. Mookie Betts has got to make a play kind of on the run, rush his throw, throws one in the dirt. Victor Scott's at first. What, two or three pitches later, he He's winds up taking second. off. Second. He's on second and stole the bag with ease against Will Smith, who's the best catcher in the league. It wasn't even close. Nope. And that's why he needs to probably be at the top of the lineup. Uh, you you got to get you. He's on second with less than two outs. Uh, Wynn got out. Brendan Donovan got out in the inning. Right. That's not going to you. you I don't want to say you wasted it, but it's wasted at that moment. The only other observation I have looked at the, the Miles Michaelis. It, he gets he gets everybody in a hole early on. Ollie draws in the infield. With, with a runner a third in, in the first inning of the first game. He's, like, trying to save a run right away. I don't know if he's trying to prove to Miles Michael is, we're all in every inning. I don't know. Don't care. That was weird. <laughs> Freddie Freeman winds up getting one up, you know, getting one through the infield to set up a two runs in that inning. The only other thing, Paul Goldschmidt tattooed one. That was a rough spring he had. Mm-hmm. I mean, terrible, a terrible spring. And he tattooed one, and so, so far, unfortunately, it's the only run for the Cardinals. Question number two. From the 636, obviously the Cardinals pitching is a problem. However, are you concerned about the offense? They only have two hits today and both from Paul Goldschmidt. One of the things that we were talking about throughout the offseason months was the offense. I had made the point a while back about, hey, we were all excited about the offense coming into the year. We were drawn away from the offense because of how bad the entire pitching staff was. It wasn't just the starters. The bullpen stunk, too. If you go back and look at some of the numbers, you can cherry pick certain things to say, oh, it wasn't that bad. The, o- the only number I care about, like, I appreciate I appreciate analytics. It's information. Do with it what you want. Mm-hmm. But honestly, Kerry, the only number I care about with your office, how many damn runs are you scoring? All right. And you were fourth, I think, in the National League Central in scoring runs. So the offense was overhyped and overrated last year. Now, you did have injuries, and you do have injuries now. But full circle here, how concerned am I? I'm very concerned. And Tyler, oh, Tyler Glasnow's on the mound. So you can only bat against good <laughs> against bad pitching then. That's the only time you can score runs? That's how you get that average up. That's how you get the... Ah, yeah. yeah. You get eight against bad pitchers, zero oh. against... 
good pitchers, and then you're at four runs a game. I'm concerned, man. Yeah. Arenado hasn't done anything. Gorman hasn't done anything. Tough matchup for Gorman. Lefty on lefty with Glass now, but still. It's, it's hard to it's hard to score when you don't get on base. Yep. And I think they've only been on base. And I think you brought up a great point. Today. Victor Scott gets the second, and it was at the end, no problem. We'll just go through win and Donovan, and we're good. Less than two outs. If you're not going to hit with runners in scoring position, it won't matter. <laughs> you won't. You will not win. And and we. We've got a few texts today. Oh, it's overreaction. It's one game. It is. It is one game. But it's so similar to what we witnessed last year in this moment. Like, two innings, two runs in the first inning. Yep. Check. There you go. Bingo. Five runs by by the third inning. Check. Pitcher out, fourth and the third. Check. Hitters not hitting. Check. Yep. Runner on second in scoring position. Don't score. Check. It's one game. But when it's what I wa- what watched all last season, h- h- hell yeah, I'm, I'm going to be a little bit worried. You, you, Kerry, you nailed that. It, you're absolutely right. If this were a 4-3 game right now and it was competitive and you're like kind of cling out and the, and the Cardinals wound up losing. Yeah. Okay. It's a competitive game. You wound up losing to the best, you know, the best team in the National League or the second best team in the National League, depending on where you have the Dodgers right. and the Braves. But it's exactly what you described, Kerry. It was last. It's last been. A, it's been last year all over again. Miles Michaelis, st- your starter, stinks. Oh, it's the Dodgers. Okay. Yeah. Are you a contender or not? I do not want to play the. Oh, it's the Dodgers or oh, it's the Braves or oh. Are you a contender or not? You can only beat the Pirates. This is. This was my. This was our point for for the entire off season. By the way, Tyler Glass now is a right-handed pitcher. Oh, my bad. Sorry. The tax line. My bad. You know, of nope. course. <laughs> Keep Thank, you. Thank you. Yep. So I don't know why. I don't know why I was thinking lefty. I apologize. Well, there's a lefty on the mound right now, as Matthew. That's Matthew Libertor, but he's so. definitely not wearing a Dodger <laughs> uniform. Look but at those yeah. green shoes. My bad. Tax line. Thank you for holding me accountable. That was, uh, that was a dumb statement. Question number three. From the 314, no joke, I honestly did not know today was opening day for the Cardinals. When I say apathy is set in, I mean it is going to be another long year for you boys talking about this team. Somewhere down the road, I'll buy a round to help you get through it. (laughs) Do appreciate that. The question, though, is... Is there any excitement about this team, though? Like, this texter didn't even know today was opening day. Are you listening, Cardinals Brass? Because <laughs> I don't. It, we, we've said this before. People have texted in, hold the team accountable. You can hold the team more accountable than we can by not showing up, by not buying the product. That is going to send the big message to the Cardinals Brass. And this texter, who I'm, I'm just going to assume is a, is a is a good a big Cardinals fan, do, doesn't know that we forgot, he forgot opening day was today. This is your fan base. So what's exciting, the young players playing well. But that last part is important. I can get on board with an average season if you have some exciting players. But they got to be playing well. What am I buying? Last year, what are you buying? You're watching the development of Jordan Walker? Right. No. I can get on board with, you know, a season that's kind of up and down and mm-hmm. ah, they're kind of hanging in it, but are they a good team? I don't know. And the young players are outstanding, but we're a long way away from that. Well, I can get on board with Victor Scott the second still in 162 bases. That's Deal. what he's on pace for right now. Yeah. Yeah. I honestly, I feel like if he got on base at least one time <laughs> he's going a game, to steal. he's going to steal. Yes. Now, unfortunately, the Cardinals are also on base to lose 162. Ah, Damn. That's not great. Can't win them all, Anthony. No, yeah, no you can't. Can't win them Certainly all. Can't. That's my 162 and 0 theory. Yeah, just well, no. yeah. yep. right out the window. No, huh? that wasn't you, Kerry. You, you were in the in, oh, in fairness. Did, you you were in the glasses. I had my glasses so. on. Yeah. You're right. A lot of ball left, though. We got uh, sure. one inning. <laughs> <laughs> hey, don't forget, 101 ESPN will be broadcasting live from the Budweiser Brew House inside Ballpark Village next Thursday for opening day. The home opener Ooh. is almost here, and we know you're excited despite that uh, 7-1 score today. Uh. And we'll be set up just steps away from Bush Stadium with the opening drive, BK and Ferrario. And whoever the last lane is, all coming live to you next mm. Thursday, April 4th from Ballpark Village. And we'll be there, too. So the fast lane will be there in the last lane. Our opening day broadcast brought to you by Holiday World and Splash and Safari and by Budweiser. I'm we- excited to be there. 
Yes, me too, Marsh. Now, the excitement level. I said it there earlier in the show that I was excited for this season. Is that gone? I mean, it's it's dwindling for sure. Like, if there's a percentage, it's probably down to like 84. <laughs> One game, Marsh. Same Marsh's amount of wins out. they might have. <sighs> he is out. All right, we'll continue our sports six pack. What would you do? Three? We got three. It's not good enough, Marsh. Mm. Let's do three more. Better than one. That's true. (laughs) Is that a Cardinals reference, too? Because you looked up at the screen. I did. When you said that. I I did. Yeah. Is Tyler Glass now righty or lefty? (laughs) The rest of the Sports Six back next. With the weather changing, March is a critical time to check your home's windows. If yours are cracked or leaking, maybe they won't open or stay open, then it's time to call the pros at Window Nation right now. For every two windows you buy, you'll get two windows free. There's no limit to how much you could save. Plus, you could save even more with zero down, zero interest, and make zero payments for 24 months. Window Nation's windows come with a lifetime warranty and can be installed in one day or less. With proven quality and service, it's no wonder Thousands of homeowners have trusted Window Nation for their homes, and you can too. So if those old finicky windows and high energy costs from the winter are cutting deep into your finances, don't miss out with an unlimited buy two, get two free, plus zero down, zero interest, and make zero payments for 24 months. 24 months, you can't afford to wait. And if you buy a house of windows, you can get a pair of St. Louis Cardinals tickets. It's easy. Just call 866 866- 90 Nation or visit windownation.com to schedule your in home free estimate.
101 ESPN Sports Center. I'm Andrew Marsh. It's time for a Sports Center update brought to you by Saliga Heating and Cooling. The Cardinals trail the Dodgers 7 to 1 in the top of the ninth inning. One out. The Cardinals are down. Time, Marsh. It's rally time, buddy. Cardinals are losing 7 to 1 in the ninth inning, top of the ninth inning. We talked all day long about your St. Louis Cardinals. If you missed anything from today's show, make sure you go to 101ESPN.com or check out the free 101 mobile app. Just head to the podcast page and you'll find it there. And it's all brought to you by Dobbs Tire and Auto Centers. And if you do head to the podcast page, you'll also see our interviews with Chris Kerber and Wayne Gallman of the Battle Hawks. So make sure you check that out as well. Speaking of Chris Kerber, he'll be on the call tonight for the Blues going up against the Flames. You can listen to that right here on 101 ESPN. Pre game starts at six o'clock. Puck drop is at seven. And we have the Sports Six Pack Part Two coming up next. So if you have any questions for Part Two of the Sports Six Pack, send it our way to the Air Comfort Service text line 314 399 9646. Part Two coming up next. I'm Andrew Marsh, and the Sports Center update is brought to you by Saliga Heating and Cooling, independent American standard heating and air conditioning dealer. Time for the fast lane to answer your sports questions. I want to ask you a bunch of questions. And I want to have them answered immediately. Asking me all these weird questions. Answer the question. Answer the question. Answer me. The sports six pack is now. It's fast lane on 101 ESPN Park Deuce. Of our sports six pack. What's wrong, Kerry? I'm just thinking we're not believing enough. That's why we're not coming back. I like that attitude. You In know what I do. Room, oh, yeah. we're just not believing enough. Where's those glasses that we just mm-hmm. got? Can you hand those over? There you go. Thank you. We got uh, Jamie got on Amazon the other day. I look good. You know, Kerry, I'm glad that you said that because we as fans, we have an opportunity here. And you know we like to get nasty here in the fast lane. Yeah. We have got to believe more because when we believe more, good things happen. Never mind, the Man, game's over. Game's over. <laughs> <laughs> to hell with it. <laughs> Abysmal effort. Abysmal. Oh. I know it's the first game. I know it's the Dodgers and all that. Abysmal effort. Seven to one, they lose. Three hits on the day, I believe, three for hits? the Cardinals. Is that all we got? Three? I'm sorry. Three hits, hits for Paul Goldschmidt today. Oh. Did he have three hits? Yeah, two. For sure. He yeah, went three. He, he did went three for four. He had all the wow. hits. Wow. He had all he the had hits. All the hits. Just, just let him keep batting. The guy that we were concerned about <laughs> heading into the regular season. He seems okay. This is the best player so far on your team. So the rest of the lineup collectively. Uh not good 30, enough. 31 at bats. Not even close. Goldschmidt, three hits. Everybody else, nothing. It wasn't Victor Scott got on at, base. What's that? Wilson Contreras walked. He walked, and Victor Scott got on via the air and stole a bag. And that's yeah, it. That's, that's your it. Uh, that's your positive performance. Whew. Yeah. <sighs> Unless you want to kind of part and uh, parcel some of the relief <laughs> stuff. But like Libertor, for example, he pitched, yeah. well, he pitched a great inning. Good. Six scoreless. Hate. Scoreless. 6 one hate says, shove your glasses. <laughs> shove your glasses. You know what, 6 one hate? Let's break them. Hey, you know, 6 one hate? I don't have time for your energy right now, okay? <laughs> or I don't have energy for you, period. <laughs> I just don't. Seven one, no, not competitive. I don't care. It's the Dodgers. Be competitive. Be better than that. Mm. Game was over in the second inning. Game yeah. was over in the second. Or the it's third. Always tomorrow, Marshy. Yeah. Unfortunately. Great. Yeah, we gotta go through this again. <laughs> Jeez. This yeah. time it'll be later in the evening. Uh, yeah. All right. Mm-hmm. Was there a question? Yeah, yeah. We have a bunch of questions. Okay. Question number four. All right. This one has nothing to do with the Cardinals. It actually has something to do with football. Anthony, you might enjoy this question from the 573. Anthony, do you agree that the Falcons let go of Matt Ryan a season too early? Hmm. Um, not from a non-play standpoint, no, because when he went to the Colts, he was a disaster. I think I think his time was it was up. it was money wasn't it when did the the contract they were it was it was Deshaun Watson 
Oh, they didn't sign Deshaun Watson. They wanted to. That didn't work out. You don't get no. rid of one guy if you don't have another. Right. Yep. So they didn't get rid of Matt Ryan. They pursued Deshaun Watson. Mm. Watson fortunately chose Cleveland, but the damage was done. Gotcha. And Matt was like, hey, I think it's best if we part. And it wasn't, you know, I, I, I think the reports were that Matt Ryan was not happy about the situation, but understood it because his time was coming up. But he wanted an opportunity to go to a, a potential contender. And the Colts had had a good roster, what we thought. And Matt Ryan was unfortunately he was just terrible. So, no, I don't think they got rid of him a, a year too early. They needed to start the process. Uh, this texture also went on to say that I believe Ritter actually would have benefited from Matty Ice mentoring him uh, over Mariota. Yeah, no, I, you're right about that. You're right about that. I think Desmond Ritter kind of is what he is. He's he's uh, he's a backup. The turnovers were terrible last year, but now, you know, he's going to be a backup in Arizona. They, they had to upgrade at that position, and they did. With Kirk, regular seasons, regular season cousins. <laughs> 10 win team. Kirk, um, regular season cousins. Yep. <laughs> Bouncing the first, but they upgraded dramatically. Question number five. Good point, though, about Matt Ryan and Ritter. All right, back to the Cardinals. Uh, from yeah. 314, do you think John Mozalock thinks he's the smartest guy in baseball? I do. That's what the texter said, too. Yeah. <laughs> I do. No, I mean, that's. The, I said that. I said that. You know, I was being facetious there. I, I wonder, though. Carry if the Cardinals and I've wondered this for a while. Not just this isn't a new new. This isn't a new thought, but I have wondered for several years now if the Cardinals still feel as though like they're ahead of the game. Because at one point they were. There's really no debating that they were ahead of the game when it came to scouting, finding certain players that were undervalued by the market that they would bring in. And they'd sprinkle a little of that Cardinals devil magic on them. How's that working out now? It's not. Okay. The, the, I wonder, Times is a changing. I wonder if the arrogance there has finally caught up to them. They're not ahead of things from a scouting department. They're not ahead of things when, when you're talking about unearthing some of these gems. And because they spend-ish, they're not overcoming some of those mistakes like the Phillies did. The Phillies don't draft well at all. But what they do is like, all right, we screwed up another draft. Let's sign or bring in JT Real Muto or Nicholas Castellanos or Kyle Schwarber or Bryce Harper or Trey Turner or Zach Wheeler. They overcome their draft follies by overspending in free agency. Cardinals aren't going to do that. We know that. So at what point, where are you now when it comes to scouting and developing that talent? Well, I'll tell you what, they, they, uh, <laughs> they figure it out. What? They better figure it out. Oh, they better figure it out. Yeah. I, said, I, I thought you said they're going to figure it out. No, I said they better figure it out. Yes. Because the performance today. Not great. No bueno. No. Question number six. It's always tomorrow, like you said. No, always tomorrow. So excited. Yeah, From the uh, 314, when is the next Freedom Friday? Oh, shoot. That's right. There you go. We meant to say this. Tomorrow. It's the last Friday of the month that we're doing Freedom Friday here in the Fast Lane. So you have an opportunity. We did this. We when did we did we do this on the last Friday? Last? We did it on a Thursday. We did it on a Thursday. Yeah. What the we hell? We didn't call we it thinking? Freedom Friday. We just oh, called it. Call call it. Yeah. It's Freedom Thursday. Freedom Thursday. Freedom Thursday. But, but Freedom Friday sounds better. Sounds it just better. sounds better. Yeah. They got the whole last alliteration Friday. going on there. Of yeah. The month. Freedom Friday is on the last Friday of the month in the Fast Lane. Yes. So tomorrow will be a Freedom Friday. You may ask yourself, what's a Freedom Friday? Well, you're an American, so you're free, so that's just good. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. USA. 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 But a Freedom Friday here in the Fast okay. Lane yeah. is you get to pick the topic. Mm, the whole we show literally do not plan the show. Now, we'll prep-ish, <laughs> but you choose the topics. And this was born out of, uh, out of spite. Some, some spite. You, 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 yeah. you wanted to say it, but you didn't. I'll say it for you. Yeah. Out of spite. Out of spite. And for those that don't know, Anthony is, is we, we call him Ranthony around here from time to time. Yeah, he shows up. We had uh, we had some some texters complaining about what we were discussing, mm -hmm. and Anthony said, we know what the hell with it. You pick. You pick Whatever you want to talk about. And so that next day, which ended up being a Thursday, mm -hmm. 
we let the the, the listeners pick every single topic, and we yep. said, you know what? That's a pretty damn pretty damn good idea. <laughs> what, do you, what do you think we're going to get tomorrow? A lot of Cardinals. Oh, we do have a Blues game tonight. See True. Blues uh, tonight. I'm hoping that that our listeners also, at least some of them, one, one you know, one topic. It doesn't have to be a full segment. But one topic. Sweet sixteen. Oh yeah. You got, Please. You got Carrie's Illini tonight. You got my UConn Huskies going. Your UConn. Oh yeah. Oh my God. How many teams do you have? You got the San Jose Sharks. I don't have the Sharks. You got the UConn Huskies. You got the Atlanta Falcons. Basketball. You got the Kansas City Chiefs. The Giants. You got the Giants. I I told Chiefs the Sharks. Sharks. I told Chiefs Kingdom that I I look. I thank you you for dragging me along your bandwagon. I I stopped. Mm. Chiefs Kingdom knows this. They didn't want me. I I understood that, and I said, hey, thank you for giving me the the greatest (laughs) ride of my life in the Super Bowl. Thank you for that. I experienced that as a Chiefs fan. But I was only that for two weeks. I mm. let go. All right. I went back to my crap team. Teams. We'll let it slide. Congratulations, 328 day, <laughs> you know? But my UConn Huskies are playing tonight. I've been on UConn since last year. That's true. When they were a four seed. When they won the championship. Yes. No, hold on. <laughs> hold on, Marsh. You got my back on this. And don't even joke about you it. You did have the winner. You had them winning. I had them winning before, before the tournament. The tournament. tournament. Okay. Okay. It's I'll not like they were a one seed either. No, right. Thank Marsh. Thank you. No, I'll so, yeah. accept that. Thank you. I can't wait till it's my UConn Huskies versus your. Oh, Illini. let's go. Elite <sighs> eight. Here we come. Man. But yes, Freedom Friday tomorrow. You pick out all the topics. Whatever you text in, we'll talk about. May only talk about for a minute, but we'll <laughs> we'll talk about it. So Freedom Friday tomorrow here in the Fast Lane. Was that our was that it? That was it. That was all six questions. All right. Cardinals lose today 7-1. to one. Damn. Miles Michaelis was unfortunately the story for the Cardinals. Four and a third, seven hits, five earned runs, two walks, five Ks, Ooh. allowed two Ding Dong Johnsons, one to Freddie Freeman, it was a two-run shot, one to Mookie Betts. That was an absolute laser laser beam. That was a solo shot. And the Cardinals fall today 7-1. Tyler Glass now. He was available mm-hmm. in the offseason. Mm-hmm. Cardinals said, no, thanks. We got our pitching staff. Glass now, six innings of work, two hits, one run allowed, one walk, five Ks. The one run was a Paul Goldschmidt solo shot. Goldie, by the way. Terrible spring training. Shove it, he said. I got three hits today. Mm-hmm. But again, unfortunately for the Cardinals, they're the only three hits that they, that they collected as a team. So we did get uh, another question. We'll call it an honorable mention for sure. the sports six-pack. But a uh, question from the Air Comfort Service text line. Do you think that the Cardinals win today if Sonny Gray starts today's game? I think they're more competitive. I think they're still in the damn game in the in the third inning. They weren't today. When Michaelis gave up three in the bottom of the third to make it 5-0. I'm just yes, gonna, I think I think they're competitive. I don't know if they win. I'm going to stay patient for five oh, games. Boy. For five? <laughs> for five games. Okay, fair. I want to see the five games. <laughs> if you're giving them five. <laughs> I'm going to give you five. Save two series. I'm going to give you Save the two next complete four series. starters to see if you perform better than what I saw today. All right. Five games is all you get. Zach Thompson goes tomorrow versus Miller, and then you've got Lance Lynn versus Yamamoto, yep. Mats against Gavin Stone, and then the Padres series begins. So you got four games against the Dodgers to open things up. <sighs> Three against the Padres before you return home for the home opener against the Marlins. And skip Schumacher. Yeah, rough start. All right, we got Beth the board. We got three stars of the day. We've got criticisms, compliments next. Stop the frustration with your current ride. If you need a new car, I've been talking about Auto Center's Nissan Herculaneum for years now, and they got a great spot that's got 700 vehicles, and I should say 700 plus vehicles on their lot, one location. So you don't have to drive around St. Louis or the greater Illinois area looking for your next new ride. You just got to go to one spot. In fact, you can start at AutoCenter'sNissan.com. You can peruse the selection that they have. They've got new Nissans, like a new Nissan Altima Finance 
for only $4.99 down and $4.99 a month. And then it's your snow lease on that. New Nissan Altima. Maybe you were looking at a Pathfinder. That's what we're driving. The Stoltz house. I love the Pathfinder. I've also driven the Rogue. Fan of the Rogue. Altimus, they've got them all. They also have pre-owned vehicles. Any make, model, you're going to find it there at Auto Centers Nissan Herculane. Widest selection that you can find. Best financing, too. They get a great financing department. They'll find the right vehicle for you and get you a monthly payment that you're going to be comfortable with. You're going to be thrilled with, in fact. 30-day new car return promise. Complimentary lifetime warranty. Complimentary one-year maintenance on all new Nissans. You got to check them out. Start at AutoCentersNissan.com. Then when you head out to Herculaneum, tell them Stalter sent you. It's Auto Centers Nissan. anything from today's show you can always download the podcast available to you at uh, 101 espn.com or on your 101 espn mobile app brought to you by dobbs tyron auto centers talked to a lot of cardinals today gave our mlb season predictions as well uh unfortunately talked about the aftermath of the cardinals 7-1 loss to the dodgers the blues talk with chris kerber and some battlehawks talk with wayne goleman running back for clemson as the battlehawks get prepared for michigan on saturday as the UFL season kicks off again on Saturday. We've got Bet the Board. Marsh, unfortunately, his, his magic number's down to one. Yeah, couldn't get the dub last night, though. Couldn't get the dub last night. So Run now we back. got two more games. Mm -hmm. We got to have Marsh go 0 for deuce. Yeah. And we got to go 2-0. and 0. Well, I don't think I can catch up either way. Uh, Kerry, you're out. Yeah. But Jamie and I got eight wins apiece. Marsh with 10. Kerry with seven. That's seven. All right, so... Jamie already gave his pick, and that's the Winnipeg Hockey Jets. Marsh 
What is your selection tonight? All right, so I am going back to the well, the 618, who's been helping me out these past few days, helped me with the uh, the Coyotes pick. And uh, I decided not to go with the 618 the other day or yesterday, and it it burned me. I'm going back to the 618 today, and this 618 texture likes the Guardians money line over the Athletics at minus 142. So it's right under that minus 150 threshold. We're going Guardians money line tonight. What do you got, Kerry? Oh, I, why uh, not? Yeah, that's right. Minus one and a half. All right. I'm not, sorry. Plus one and a half. Excuse yeah, me. plus one. Plus one and a half. half. Yep. yep. So I, the Iowa State Cyclones. I faded. I faded Marsh yesterday, and it worked. I'm not going to do that tonight, though. I'm going to stand on my own ground here. But you're going to need to. Kind of, but I'm going to do it. It's the A's. I'm going to do it the old-fashioned <laughs> way. Is. Yeah. You don't want to go with the A's. Yeah, that's pretty much that. <laughs> uh, Carrie, I've been bragging about my UConn Huskies. You just you, you took your Illini. I'm going to take my Huskies. I'm going to lay the 12. Oh. They're going to win. They're, they're going to roll San Diego State again tonight. It, and San Diego State's just going to they're gonna bow out early. All right. It's going to be, nah, be a bloodbath. Like your pick. They can't. You, the San Diego State can't can't handle the length, the, the speed, the athleticism. No chance. All right, there you go. There's about the board. What do we got for criticisms, compliments, Marsh? Yeah, I'm gonna assume that this is a criticism of the St. Louis Cardinals uh, from the 314. You can already write the script for the press conference. If this is a rocky season with all the injuries that they suffered, they just couldn't gain momentum. Mm. So we should feel sorry for them and give them another break. To hell with that. <laughs> I don't think so. Not up in here. But I, I agree with that line of thinking that the Cardinals will have. Yeah. From the 314, tell Miles Michaelis that if he wants us to stop calling him Moose, he needs to start winning. Absolutely. Now, we did get one earlier today, and they didn't indicate that Miles was going to be on the boat. So let's just be clear here. <laughs> but somebody said via the tax line that he, they hope a shark eats Michaelis's boat. Ah. <sighs> He's not on the boat, though. He, yeah, he's, he's just, not on the boat. It's docked. It's no docked. one's there. Yeah, with that shark. The shark decided to come further it, inland than, the, than normal. The shark was a little uh, his dazed boat. and confused. Yeah. He had been swimming around a while. He was hungry. Yep. And he decided to eat Moose's boat. So <sighs> it happens. Gosh darn. Well, speaking of Miles Michaelis from the 636, enemy of the fast lane, Miles Michaelis mm -hmm. should get negative three stars. Yeah, yep, oh. yep, I think that's fair. I do. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's been battling us in the fast lane here for a while now. <laughs> Didn't like my boat boat name suggestion. He hate me. You hate me because you ain't me. Uh, didn't like Jamie's nickname for him, Moose. Told him straight to his face. Didn't like it. Yesterday, we we felt like those comments that he made about proving everybody wrong was directed at us said we could eat bleep yeah so nobody's Not safe nobody's us. safe here in the fast line no us. Well, speaking of uh, the three stars, these three do not get negative three stars. But our third star of the day goes to Paul Goldschmidt for being the only Cardinal to record a hit today. Yeah, that's fair. Yep, nice that. job. Absolutely. Our second star of the day goes out to Checkbooks for <laughs> helping create a good baseball team. Well, that's a damn good baseball team. There. That's a damn big checkbook <laughs> for the Dodgers. Yep. Mm -hmm. Jerks. And our first star of the day goes to the Fast Lanes version of the lineup game. All oh, right. Yes. Right. Absolutely. Not yes. A yeah. couple of people rendition. struggled today. Yeah. There's no doubt about it. Miles Michaelis, everybody in the Cardinals lineup except for Goldie. Mm hmm. Mm. And BK Ferrario <laughs> in the T bone. Mm. That was a struggle bus today. Hey, yeah. you know what, though? Tomorrow's a new day, as Carrie said. Yep. You have a chance to rewrite history no yeah. doubt. and just put it behind you mm -hmm. and move forward that's right so, like it never happened and on a freedom friday no less so freedom friday tomorrow last friday of the month that's where you send in your uh, topic suggestions for us and uh here's the deal we got to talk about it whatever it is <laughs> within reason we don't want to lose our you know our fcc license so Got to be uh, got to be good about it. Blues Flames pregame coming up in five minutes. You'll hear from Alex Ferrario, and then we got the game coverage for you for Andrew Marsh, Jamie Rivers, Kerry Davis, and Anthony Stalter. See you.